And here we go once again with another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles. Welcome to this homebrew 5th Ed D&D campaign. My home campaign turned into whatever this happens to be. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. Thank you for joining us once again. This is episode 14, I believe, of The Great Confusion, uh, an alternate game to our, our long-standing nearly three-year campaign uh, in uh, the world of Omesha, my homebrew world. Uh, I'm uh, the host and GM here and draw a lot of maps and make a lot of notes and do a little bit of diagramming and occasionally a little bit of work on World Anvil, too. That's starting to get a little bit further ahead. But I'm joined by my wonderful players starting on the left. Please introduce yourself and your characters. You're muted, Pat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was eating earlier. Um, my name is Pat. I am playing Silas Marsh, uh, local warlock. I am Marie. I am playing Annie, who is uh, a rogue and a princess. Surprise princess. Surprise rogue princess. Says. <laughs> <laughs> eh, we'll, we'll table it. I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half orc cleric, and uh, half orc on the run from taxes. <laughs> uh, I'll if, go correct the typo whenever is convenient. If you're looking for Medrek, <laughs> he's somewhere else entirely. Totally. <laughs> All right. A brief recap of the previous episode. Uh, for those of you who are are watching along at home or listening, uh, or watching it on YouTube. Um, I'm hoping my volume is a little bit more significant. Uh, I'm hoping the echo isn't too bad. I've been trying to deal with some of these technical issues, uh, but I've cranked up my microphone to try to compensate. Now I think I'm whispering because I'm trying to compensate for the overly loud volume. <sighs> life is not easy. However, life in Aelsvater is about to get more interesting. At the bar, at the prompting... Uh, of one Gaetano, otherwise known as Sir Oswin, Annie revealed a little bit more of her true identity, revealing that she is, in fact, a princess of the royal realm of Alaria, currently um, out to see the world, I guess you might say. The group further discussed the events that happened underwater, in particular Silas's encounter with Oxia, and trying to figure out what the Sea Devil's plans might be. In the meantime, Gitano returned back to the Errant Widow, but later we learned from the Dwarven Captain Stoutheart that his chest, with his proof of identity, was lost overboard, meaning he has no proof to say that he is Sir Uswin. Silas goes back home to gather the Marsh Clan. Word of a sign of battle has spread, and they are primed for a fight. But while most seem to be in favor of defending the town, along with Silas's wishes, there seems to be some suggestion that others may have other motives. And Medric, sometimes known as Midric, visited the flamekeeper Tyrell to talk about the Sunstone and other lessons. During the discussion, he revealed his lie of tax omission. And, uh, well, we kind of left it at that. Where we did leave it, though, is Captain uh, Stoutheart making her way into the Three Bells to meet up with Annie and with uh, Medric. Got to get the name right myself as well. <laughs> Silas has still at home, I believe, for the evening, um, probably gathering with his son. Yep. Now, we don't have to do a moment-by-moment -moment discussion with Captain Stoutheart, although she did ask Annie and uh, Medric. I'm going to get that name like confused every single time now. Uh, but at asking Annie and Medric about what they could do. Previously, you had indicated to Gaetano and suggested that the errant widow should actually set out to sail and be safer out on the sea. Uh, Stoutheart, though, having noted that, uh, that Gaetano has actually been arrested for uh, fraud, uh, and that the captain doesn't seem to be believing uh, Oswin uh, or Gaetano, uh, wonders if there's a change in plans. What do you plan to do? I think that ultimately, I think you should leave port. 
um, Medric. I know mm -hmm. I don't do magic of any kind, but I do know that there are magics to tell if someone is telling the truth. Do you yeah. know of such things? It has been featured in my teachings before. Interlude as I check if I have the appropriate level spell. <laughs> and Annie knows of this because she does have her item, her her ring that prevents people from tell, from making her tell the truth. Yes, uh, I do remember. It was during a lesson. Yeah, like I can do it because. If we can convince them to let you cast the spell to prove that he's telling the truth and have someone that they trust to be within the spell to for them to know that, yes, this is what the spell does, then that would also help. Maybe that could. I don't know. Mm. Uh, could help. Who could we convince to actually let me cast a spell? I don't know if I'm well known enough here to be trusted. I mean, we could try to talk to Captain Pompous High Horse. Yeah, that guy. His official name is uh, Verendel, but I'm sure that people have called him <laughs> that other name a few times. Uh, he he didn't actually introduce himself, so I yeah. don't know his name. <laughs> oh, that's true. Silas recognized him, but yeah. <laughs> so, um, maybe he, because he did believe us when we were talking to him last time, he did believe us enough to do that. Maybe us being able to prove that it, he is who he is by making sure he cannot lie when he introduces himself in front of the captain and someone else. Um, one of them also under the influence of the spell might help. Yeah, it could. So, Medric, I think you're referring to Zone of Truth as yeah. a spell. Do you have that prepared? Uh, did we already rest? This is the no, day you returned back from. Evening. Yeah. So. Crap, Ola, I don't think I do. <laughs> Um, yeah. But we could do this tomorrow first thing. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, if we go to bed, then I can prepare it after. So that's why I'm bringing it up, it up now with the the captain trying to figure out a plan to get Uzwin out. For her part, Stoutheart uh, would swear up and down about... Uh, well, actually would swear up and down that Gaetano is someone special, but she doesn't actually know for certain who else he is. You can, if you tell her she would take it in stride, but she doesn't seem to even really recognize the name. That's up to you. I, I wouldn't tell her who he is. That's not for me to do. I've already done that once today. Okay. <laughs> uh. then, then she would, she would swear up and down that he is a, a good sailor and a good man. Uh, so swear by his character, that but but not his identity. So, uh, All I will say is he's not who you think, but he is the man you know. That's good enough for me. So no. Uh, you want us to set to sea. Anything else we can do before we go? I hate to leave a fight. I think that it's best for you to leave until to tomorrow night has passed. Uh, get as far as you can as soon as you can. Uh, and hopefully in the next 48 hours, everything is settled. I'll see what of my crew I can, I can recall. Most of them have set to relaxing for a day or two. Some will be difficult to get back, especially because we have no, no cargo on board, but 
Uh, between my first mate here, and you remember the, the tall human with the single wooden uh, leg, uh, or one of his le two legs is, is wooden, um, she refers to him as first mate boot, which seems terribly appropriate. He doesn't seem to Very. notice the name, or maybe he's used to it, or maybe that's actually his name. Um, but he'll he'll make sure that they that what we can, what we have to, we'll have to sell a sale. Uh, but we'll scour and see if we can find the rest of our crew. I wish we could stay more, but uh, I don't know if land battles is something the ship would be all that good at. Exactly, that's what I was thinking, and I think that the chances of them trying to attack the ship to make sure it can't sail are greater than, uh, are greater if you stay in land. I will. We'll set to that. For a comparison, this era of history uh, is still more in the ballista stage than it is the cannon stage. Instead of cannons, they would actually use more catapults there is some alchemical fire and explosives like that, but they're usually quite unreliable and they aren't used on board a ship because they're more likely to light the ship on fire than uh, actually hit anything floating at sea. Uh, but a ballista could be used uh, and they would have a, uh, a small ballista on, on this ship. But for the most part, ship to ship combat is you get close enough, you get your people on their ship and start attacking. Or if you're crazy enough, you hurl flame at them without trying, to, without catching your own sails on fire. Mm -hmm. Just grab a sorcerer or two, you know. <laughs> Magic is still a possibility, yes. Um, um, but but yes, I think that you and your crew would be safest not in in port. Well, as you wish, Gitano said to listen to you, and I take his word for everything. Now, if you excuse me, I got work to do. And her and Boot uh, go back to the bar, actually get a few bottles to take back with them uh, and pay in, in uh, heavy coin. And hopefully we can get Gaetano out. One way or the other, he'll come out of that jail. If I have to fetch no, him myself. Definitely. He, he's definitely getting out and people will probably end up in a lot of trouble. If we can kinda, get him out legally, that would be pretty nice. She smiles and winks at the he'll get out, but, and, you know, one way or the other. Uh, and the two of them leave. Do you have anything else you'd like to discuss that particular evening or do that particular evening? Um, not particularly other than, like, trying to smooth out what what's going to happen. Um, I'm not going to mention that I have an item that is how I know that because I keep it invisible. So, mm -hmm. so, and, uh, yeah. um, and Medrick as well, you'll, you'll take your evening, meditate yeah. on your prayers as necessary for the morning. Anything Silas is going to achieve that evening back at the marsh, uh, compound village. Uh, <clears throat> um, Probably finding out where his uh, where uh, Nicodemus is and uh, taking him back home and then uh, hanging out with him, playing with him, putting him to bed. Okay. Um, actually, uh, he's at he's at your home. Um, Gwen is taking care of him at the moment. And is okay. To uh, see you. Um, but uh, she happily hands uh, Nicodemus back, who seems to be getting tired. It's getting pretty late for him. Uh, yeah, but he's he's one of these kids who tries to stay up late because he knows that there's something important that all the adults are talking about. He doesn't understand any of it, but he doesn't yeah. miss out. I will make sure that he is uh, put to bed and uh, thank Gwen for for taking care of him. Okay. All of you go to sleep that evening. The clouds have grown thick. And there's a distant rumbling of thunder. But the air is, while thick with uh, humidity, not just, not yet any rain, not yet any, any terrible blustery winds, despite what Silas's earlier prediction had had. Uh, but the wind is definitely shifting, and it feels cool blowing in off of the sea. 
Annie. Yes. You find yourself walking the halls of the castle at Paravel. It's late at night. You're not dressed in the royal finery. You're dressed in those other clothes. The ones that you managed through three or four different hands to pick up. The ones that make almost no noise, are nice and dark, and can't easily um, let you be spotted while you're skulking about the, uh, the grounds. It's late at night. You've done this a few times, but this is one of the first times you've ever been so bold as to sneak into the royal um, meeting rooms when no one is there. The lock proved to be a little bit more complicated than you expected, but also a little bit uh, of, a, of a, a pride in that the, the lock was well made. Seemingly the same manufacturer as that gifted lock you were given the year before. But you managed to open up the chamber, and inside you see the grand map spread across the large table. There are eight chairs, actually, sorry, ten chairs in total around the room, the two, of course, for the two sovereigns, your mother and your father, and then seven more for the different, uh, the, the seven themselves, the, the knights of Alaria, uh, and then one more for a guest that's seated opposite of where the, uh, where the king and queen's seat is. That chair seems to be occupied, but it's dim in here, and you can't really make out who it is. What do you do? I try to hide Okay. against the wall, like make myself small. Make a make a stealth roll just for fun. Cool. Well that new dive will be three, so that is <laughs> an eight. Okay. And going in jail. <laughs> <laughs> First roll First and roll. directly into jail. Did not pass go. <laughs> uh, Five or below jail right away. <laughs> as you creep around the room, uh, you end up uh, accidentally kicking over uh, a a uh, brass container, which is contains the the poker and a couple of other tools needed for the fireplace, and they go clattering to the ground. Uh, and it the noise is pretty uh, tremendous. Uh, you, at first you think someone down the hallway should have heard that, but at the very least the person sitting in that chair should have. And yet there doesn't seem to be an immediate reaction to that. And as you circle around to see a little bit more, the person in the chair, englobed in, in the darkness of the room, seems to be even darker than the shadow, than the moonlight letting in through the, the window uh, would illuminate. And it turns to you slightly, its head somehow swiveling without actually uh, forming that normal human twist and tilt. And you see two small diamond-like eyes in the shadow looking at you. Is that the diamond? You have quite an interesting life. I was right about you. I'm confused as to why you are here, but I've never been one to look a gift over. You're in danger. Not from me. But other enemies are coming. I've heard some rumors that are interesting. I was wondering... Would you like some help? And the two diamond eyes are going to fixed on you. There's no sense of a face, just a, a void where the face should be. No sense of a body, really. Just a shape that seems to shift and twist in darkness over darkness. And what would this help cost? Costs. Ah, yes. The royal language of give and take. Well, if you insist on framing it that way, all it would take would be 
a dream or two. No. Really? Surely there must be some conjurings of your mind you'd like to get rid of. I don't have anything that I would like to give you. Impressive. And perhaps short-sighted. But you're young. You'll learn that there are important long-term plans to consider. Still. That is fair. But I, vagueness is not something that's useful for me. And apparently, for the moment, neither am I. Sleep well. You're going to have a very busy night tomorrow. And with that, the two diamonds sort of fade into darkness. And that darkness seems to spread over the room. Where it crosses the moonlight, it consumes it. And soon you find yourself in a void. And you wake up with a start. Still midway through the night. You can feel a little cold, clammy sweat. There's a little sliver of moonlight coming in through your, your window. And just for a second, was there a shadow that crossed over the moon? But it's hard to tell in the trick of the light. When eyes still adjust. It was just a bird. Always just a bird. Morning comes. Now for people who've lived in this coastal town forever, a thick fog that obscures the morning sun is not uncommon. And that seems to be what's consuming it right now. There is a glow on the horizon. If you know where to look, you can see it. You can stare directly at it, the fog being so thick and silver and immaterial. Dark clouds hover overhead, barely seeing themselves in the fog that, that consumes and wraps over everything. Silas, you wake refreshed with uh, Nicodemus curled up beside you on the bed. Still somewhat sleepy, but turning and kicking a little bit. You can feel a bruise forming where he may have been kicking in the night. <laughs> oh, my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. <clears throat> it's, it's more than a bruise there, but yes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but what, <clears throat> what time of the morning is it? Is it already sunrise? or? Um, it would be just on the edge of sunrise. You've lived a fisherman's life, or at least your family has. So you're used to getting up just before the sun. It's kind of an instinct at this point. Um, I'll probably lay there until the sun comes up, just watching Nikki. Okay. Uh, and then once the sun is up, uh, I'll help get him up. We've say breakfast time, Nikki. Time to get up. Get up. <laughs> when he doesn't get up the first time. <laughs> No, yeah. Nikki kind of yawns and half blearily looks at you, but breakfast seems to be an important word. Mm, she kind of bacon. nods, following you around the room. You go through and make up a little bit of, of breakfast, something something probably fairly simple, nothing to be complicated, a little porridge, maybe warm yeah. it up a little bit. And I make sure that he's wearing his, uh, his brand new bracelets, bracers. Okay. They're pretty heavy for him, and he kind of, uh, once you've kind of slipped them onto his hands, he kind of toys and pulls and tugs at them, uh, and you can see that every time he's lifting his hands, there's just an extra little weight that he's kind of getting used, getting used to. Um, I tell him that these are for uh, practicing, so he'll become big and strong like, uh, uh, like his granddad. Okay. Um, he kind of looks at you with surprise and then kind of marches around the room, looking a little bit more square-shouldered. He's definitely trying, kind of imitating, uh, 
imitating the the the, uh, the older folks that he's seen, older than you. So Athenos in particular, you can see this little sort of half uh, uh, half rolled forward shoulder, uh, kind of stomping around, and it's unmistakable to you because you know Athenos so well, but you know that it's 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 almost too hilarious to watch. Um, mm. I do try to get him to act more like his grandfather than Athenos, uh, but uh, yeah, it's funny. I pointed out to well, actually, it's nobody else in the house, so I pointed <laughs> out to me. Uh, <laughs> and by grandfather, I'm assuming you're referring to Wish or uh, Yule. Oh, to Yule. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, Silas's father. Yeah. At some point, he'd be uh, the one that, he'd be the one that uh, Nikki would know more. Okay. At some point, Nikki discovers that these are metal and they make noise when you hit things with them. Oh, and no. So half of the morning is spent just sort of tick, 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 and, and kind of banging it on every surface you can find to figure out what the different sounds are like, different patterns and different different uh, weights and strengths. Mm hmm. Uh, I tell him that uh, uh, that's okay, but don't bang things too hard. You might break something. And you think he's you know he looks very serious when you're saying that and kind of nods his head and then as soon as you turn your back you hear a massive whack as he hits something really really hard seeing if it would break the nicodemus he kind of looks what did i say break things hard hit. you don't break things that's not what a good boy does And he kind of thinks this over for a while. And you can kind of see the wheels turning. It's sort of like... Uh, actually, make an insight check. This would be fun. Make an insight check on your... on your. Uh, how old is he? He's like... Three. Three? Your three-year-old boy? That's my crappy insight. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, oh what, what is it? So... <laughs> Three slash 21, but the 21 doesn't matter. <laughs> For a moment there, you think, I know exactly what he's thinking. And then you try to think back to when you were three and think, oh, yeah, no, that's not definitely what he's thinking. Because I had, you know, some really strict parents. And I don't want to be that strict, but surely he's not going to cry, is he? And this whole string of thoughts go through your head and you get kind of distracted and realize you really haven't noticed anything across his face. As he turns away and sort of slinks off to a different part of the room. <laughs> With more breakable objects. <laughs> Who knows? Uh... Um, you hear a knock on the door and uh, Gwendolyn is there again. Hey, Silas, um, I don't know what's going on, but it sounds as though you're going to be needed in town again. Are you working today? Is that it? Uh, she was not present at the meeting. She was helping yep. with Nikki. Probably not working, but uh, I think there's, there's some, uh, I don't know what we... I don't know what they're called. I guess they call them sea devils, but uh, in the bay that uh, want to make a mess of the town. So I'm going to go try and stop them. Yeah, Viv's mentioned guys, something about that, but I didn't know exactly what she meant. Sounds dangerous. It probably is, but you guys should be safe here. Well, I can take uh, care of Nikki for the day if you don't, if you don't mind. Uh, oh, sure. And Nikki, having seen her, kind of runs over the room and kind of greets her as she kneels down to hug him. Uh, Gwen's, you know, uh, gotten kind of close with, with Nikki uh, and has been kind of your one of your go-to uh, uh, people. Um, you probably think, too, that because Gwen comes from outside of the village, she's probably a good influence. Yeah. Uh, I do tell her that um, to make sure he's wearing... Uh, the bracers, uh, they'll, if anything does happen, they'll help protect them. Uh, and Nikki kind of holds them up proudly. He uh, is getting used to itting hay, ings, they, uh, <laughs> with them, which uh, I'm trying to get him to stop. As if on cue, he kind of whacks his wrist against uh, the wooden leg of a chair. And it kind of makes a satisfying clunk. He kind of giggles. 
Yes. I'll so, see what I can uh, do. Um, they're very nice. Yeah, I may look into buying a lot of pillows for the house. Just mm. tack them onto all the walls and the tables and everything. Make him a padded cell. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, Gwendolyn kind of laughs. Um, we'll be fine. Good. Well, I'll give her a hug. Um, I have to head out then. Hopefully things go well. And Gwen picks up uh, Nikki and, and says, say, say goodbye to your daddy now. And he's kind of waving and kind of accidentally, you're pretty sure it was an accident? Waves his arm a little bit too much and kind of clonks uh, Gwen in the head with the back of one of the, the uh, <laughs> bracers. Uh, and she kind of grabs the arm and pushes it down. He looks kind of genuinely horrified as she kind of has this red spot forming on her forehead now. Um, You'll but, be a good boy, Nikki. And he nods his head sincerely. And then I'll go get Blondie and head to town. Okay. Annie and Medrick, you both wake up the next morning. Yep. It's a chilly morning, so. feeling a little <laughs> bit like, you know, Annie, you're pretty sure you'd close the window, but it's a little bit of jar now and a little bit of this, this wispy fog is kind of crawling in. Uh, it gives a little bit of chill. The nice, thick, handmade blankets, though, are uh, a dream. They're they're made from a rougher cloth than you would have grown up with, but they are so warm. Does just, just burrito and wants to stay in, but knows I need to do things. In contrast, Medrick, there's no cold at all. You feel fine. It's nice and warm today. Yeah. It's like every day. It's always warm. Exactly. Since coming, Thank you, Ignis. Thank, uh, since coming into the light of Ignis, you've never known a cold day. And thank Ignis also for providing the fire to roast the pork that I can smell like the bake. The smell of bacon is wafting right now, and it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, I better get up. <laughs> um. You can also smell the fresh bread as well. That um, yeah. uh, is it. Sydney is the. The, the baker i'm always making it make it mixing up those three maybe they take different turns huh? well i think i think sydney's the baker and saffron is the um is the uh the brewer but yes okay. they would work together they're both yeast involved anyway if you will <laughs> uh, but certainly sandy will still be out front and it's a relatively empty room by the time the two of you have probably gotten up. I suspect that the two of you are not necessarily early risers, but you can prove me wrong. Uh, with what's going on, Annie would try to wake up a little bit early. Okay. And with, uh, Never can be an early riser, like if the need is there, but like, otherwise like a mid morning riser. Yeah. The, there we, is we kind of have stuff we need to get done today. <laughs> There is a, a, a standard practice to greet the sun as it rises for Ignians. Not all of them yeah. necessarily uh, respect that or, or even worry about it. But if, if, the, if you were on the road, it would be a lot more important to greet the sun. Uh, for the entire time you've been in this village, which hasn't been a huge amount of time, but long enough to recognize that the morning sun, if you can see it, is on the horizon. But most of the time, you don't see it. And certainly looking yeah. out, uh, you probably wake with the sun, look out, see the thick fog and go, yeah, it's not coming up for a while uh, and, and uh, are able to rest. Well, the two of you wake, you presumably come downstairs for breakfast at one point or another, and you're probably there for a while. Um, I'll do a quick prayer to uh, remember the uh, zone of through spell. Okay. And because my int is low and I'm not that wise, then I somehow forget how to cast a um, whole person. It's like, oops. <laughs> it's more like you're 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 Fourth casting man, man. you're casting your mind out towards Ignis and saying, "Give me the blessings I need to accomplish the things I need to do today." I know I have to do this. I'm pretty sure that I don't have to do this. Uh, and it's more like you don't invoke the prayers. So the. As, a, as an aside, the way I, I see the, the cleric justification for the morning thing is you literally have to read the prayers 
necessary for the spells and then bring that energy and knowledge. It's not that you forget how to do it. It's more of you've not invoked it and prepared it for that day. Okay. But you do know uh, that the, the light of Ignis shines bright and can reveal the truth. Um, hence the zone of truth that you can that you can cast. Nice. Annie, you were up early, and so you saw the early crowd, fishermen getting ready for their uh, their regular day, needing a good, thick, hot meal. Um, the Three Bells has a good reputation for having a, a very tasty breakfast. For them, mostly, uh, for the those those fishermen, it's mostly uh, probably gruel or, or um, no, that sounds terrible, but uh, <laughs> porridge, really. Uh, with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of, of uh, sweetness in it as well. And a thick milk drink. Uh, it's warm milk um, steeped in a little bit of tea. It's made in a large, large pail. So uh, a little bit of, of, of caffeine for the morning uh, to go with their porridge. And despite the warnings you thought you had issued yesterday, None of them seem to be all that particularly concerned. There's some regular small talk about different places are going to to try and how the season is changing and how this fish or that fish is definitely uh, strong in the area, seeing a, a diminishment of one thing or another. There's also a few people who are who are going to be heading down to the docks. There aren't any boats expected in soon, so there's work being done on the docks themselves to make sure that they're in good shape. But generally, just the, the morning chatter. Um, when I did get up this morning, I'm going to make sure that my hair is very well put together and I am going to make sure that I do have my scroll of pedigree on me just in case she goes down. Okay. You hide that somewhere in yourself or is that? Uh, it would probably be in like my pocket. Okay. Or like, or actually no, it would be wrapped with my, uh, dagger that I keep on my leg. Okay. Because that is also an identifying piece of thing. <laughs> It, it it in the to the right person definitely um, the 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 dagger is identifiable um, to the wrong person it's just a dagger but uh, you you've some people have seen it and not reacted other people have, have have seen just a glimpse and wondered but didn't question about it um, the scroll yep. of pedigree um, it's a possession I get from being a noble <laughs> right right okay. Um, do you have that in a in a scroll tube or case? It would be harder to put on your leg if it's got that, but you could. Um, I would probably like to to make it so that I can carry it on me easily. I would probably have like folded it in a way that I can put it with the dagger. Okay. Like have it like between my leg and the dagger thing. Okay. It it's it's a bit more crumpled than I would like it to be, but. And you it kind of stays on. cinch up the, the leather strap of the, the dagger holster tightly so that hopefully, other than your own sweat, it shouldn't get too uh, too damp. Yep. Okay. I'd, I'd probably have figured out a way over time to like make sure that it can stay there safely. Okay. Probably wrapped up in a little bit of oil cloth or something like that to, to keep it from getting soaked. Okay. Yep. Uh, so I make sure that I have that on me if shit does go south trying to get Gaetano out. <laughs> All right. Because um, it has, like, the royal seals and everything that I need to prove that I am me. Yeah, there's some certification to the paper. Maybe in a magical aspect or something that, that uh, it, it, it kind of acts like it's a self-styled zone of truth, maybe? Something like that? Um, something like that. I mean... Not impossible to fake, but not too many people would be able to go through the bother of doing so. After all, if it can be yeah. made once, it can be made again. Yeah. All right. Uh, Medric strolls down after a few hours, uh, looking refreshed. Uh, by this point, Medric, the room has emptied out quite a bit. Um, there's some of the older folk who are here playing a, a game of uh, Knots and Dragons over in the corner. Uh, and uh, it's kind of like chess and checkers combined. Uh, pieces can ma can move multiple steps if they take another piece. Uh, it's a pretty crude handmade set made out of wood. Uh, one side stained a uh, sort of beet red, and the other one sort of a bleached white, probably from uh, from driftwood. 
and they seem to be having a healthy argument about uh, about whether a move was legal or not. Nice. Uh, but you see Annie sitting in the corner, presumably having some of the delightful breakfast. They can make breakfast to order. The the, okay. the large amount of porridge is the cheapest that you can get on the menu, uh, but they can actually do uh, eggs and bacon, <laughs> fried oh, potatoes, yeah. that sort bacon of thing. Bacon. She they, should probably eat like some fruit. Okay. There is some fruit in the area. Some came off of uh, actually off of uh, the errant widow. It was part of what they were delivering was fruit that came from the perfume reef. So there's some Ooh. some oranges basically that have lasted. Yep. Um, I would before we leave. I'd like to talk to Sandy for a moment. Okay. Well, first you can talk to Medric, who presumably has come please. over to your table. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Hey, so we, we should hurry and eat and get Gaetan out. Yes. What's your plan, aside from the Zone of Truth? Like, how do we convince people? And how do we find a, what did you call him? Short guy high horse? Captain Pompous high horse. But yes. yes. <laughs> Short guy high horse is a phrase I've got to remember. <laughs> Um, I, well, he's told Silas to meet him at, at his office, and I think that having Gaetano, but also one of his men, or even him, or someone that is, what, having him have one of the people who did not believe him also with us, I don't know, I just, we need to get Gaetano out, because probably gives us a much better chance of dealing with this. Yeah, I agree. Um, also, I have, I have no. a plan to see if shit goes south, but I don't want to use it. What is it? It's me. Oh, like telling everybody you're that, that and I'll whisper that you're a I princess. Don't. Yes, I don't want to have to use it. Um, okay. But if shit goes south, uh, and I have proof that I am me, uh, which I'm guessing is similar proof that ended up in the sea uh, for Gaetano. So at the very least, I can prove that I am me, and if I can prove that I am me, then I can prove that he is him, if that makes sense. It does. So we should head to, uh... wow, name, Mr. Yes. Pumpkin's High Horse's office then. Yes. Uh, and I also kind of want to let the the three bells know what's going on and have them safe because I like it here and I mm -hmm. don't want them to be in danger as much as I can. Yeah, tell them to lock the doors, barricade everything. Yes. Um, and maybe if there's a cellar hide in there. Is Silas heading directly to meet with the others at the Three Bells? You're muted. Yeah, it would make the most sense for, for where to go. Okay, and about this time, Silas comes through the door, spots the other two. Wave to Silas. Morning. 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 We have kind of a plan um, because we have to get Gaetano. His suspicions came true. Oh, okay. Yeah, so part one of today is trying to get him out because he's probably our best chance at dealing with this. How did things go with your family? Uh, well... Uh, some of them are certainly willing to help uh, fight against the uh, the sea devils. Um, but I th think uh, the family may may use this as a way to uh, strike at opposition from within the town. Um, I don't know exactly who 
I would not be surprised if the Temple of Ignis was one of their targets. Oh, hell no. Uh, well, we know how... We know how much the town and my family get along and how much Ignis gets along with others. And I, th I think that just might be a sparking point. Um, but they suggested, well, actually Mother Hydra, I believe, suggested something along the lines of uh, they won't openly assist the town, but... I believe a number of the uh, a number of our sailors may be hanging around on the docks waiting for the attack to happen so that they can be in the wrong place at the right time uh, and thus help the town without openly helping the town help themselves make sure that they need to help themselves in, in the process of the town uh, well, I think helping the town, but without making us look like we're trying to help the town. Um, making it look like they're just protecting themselves. Uh, yeah, well, basically just by being on the docks so that when the attack happens, they can go, oh, we're just defending ourselves. We're not helping the town. Um, others, I think, are going to stay in the town and help the people, help their families, uh, those that have them here. But... I would not be surprised if my aunt and uncle had people attempt to deal with certain people in the town who do not uh, do not get along with the clan or oppositional. So I think we have that complication. Well, thanks I for the warning. With this, but as long as it helps the many at this point, we need all the help we can get. Uh, yes. I mean, the clan itself is certainly willing to help, but those who lead it, uh, I guess, just have their own things. So. Uh, so we've got some help anyways, um, but I think it's probably up to us to get the stone uh, and deal with most of what's happening, I think. Hmm. Um, so what's the plan to help your friend? Well, um... Uh... Plan A is to prove that he's not lying using magics that Medric is aware of. Um, and Plan B is something that we'll deal with when we get there. Okay. Um, uh, well. And yeah, I'll make sure that I let the three balls know a bit of what's happening that we want them to be safe and to maybe hide in the cellar tonight. So you'll be talking probably with Sandy, who's at the bar, and who greets yeah, you I'd, with I'd the, probably pull her aside. Yeah, she would greet you with her typical, uh, uh, you know, pleasant smile. But as the conversation continues, she looks at you increasingly with an amount of worry that you were probably expecting at the same time um, it's it's still disturbing to see um, and she kind of looks at you what, what 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 prompted this whole thing to happen I don't understand all we know is that it's happening uh, and people don't believe us and that is why our friend was taken well I mean it's rather hard to believe you you've got to admit that still you don't seem like the, the sort that's going to spin me a tale like this for no particular reason. There are some that would. I'll look over and say that. The worst thing that, that'll happen if you do listen to me is that you'll lose a night's business, and I will gladly compensate for that if I am wrong. Well, more than likely, I'll lose a light night's sleep one way or the other anyway. But Sandy, uh, have I ever lied to you? 
No, you've spun quite a good tale, but I always knew it was a tale. This is no tale. What she says is true. All right. The sisters aren't going to take this well, but I suppose we'll have to make sure our regulars are safe, too. She looks over at the table of the, the two old folks <laughs> who are still bickering about this game. I, I, I would suggest... I'll, I'll make sure that my windows are barricaded at the very least, and I would suggest barricading everything that you can and spending the night in the cellar. Well, I hate Probably to... the safer way to go. If you're sure, then that's what we'll do. Still... I'd rather be doing something. I'm not much one to fight other than with my sisters. And usually then it's more flour and uh, maybe throwing a pot around. Keep your family and your regulars and your staff safe. And that is plenty of help. Yes. It's more help than the city is doing right now. So you'll be in here with us then? We will be out there trying to make sure it doesn't get to you. Well, that doesn't sound safe at all. It's, in my mind, better than that one of, one person, or three people in this case, try to keep it away from you than let them get to here and then all of us be in danger. I don't like this. You shouldn't be putting yourself in danger. There's guards for that. Yes, but the guards aren't listening. So... The very least that we can can do. If well, they're not going to listen to us, then that leaves the situation to us to deal with. Well, I've heard of attacks like this before, but I've never seen anything quite like it. And you're sure it's it's going to happen? How can you be so sure? I trust Silas. And she looks over at Silas and... and... Silas can't talk, he's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's an expression that pa passes across her face, one that Sandy really hasn't used with you before, but one you've, you've seen numerous times from lots of people in the town. And it's a sort of evaluating stare. Um, there's the sort of, they know who you are, but then they find out who you're from and that conflicts on their face. In Sandy, it lasts no more than a second uh, before she smiles and nods. All right, but you make sure you take keep yourself safe. I'd hate to think you're out there getting yourself in danger just for little old me. It's not for little old me, you at the end of the day. It's for everyone. Well, I'm not skilled, but I'm willing to defend myself. There's a frying pan around here that I'm sure that has uh, still got a few dents in from the last fool that was too drunk at my bar. I mean, that's fair. Um, I would say, yeah, make, try, to, try to make it as hard as possible for them to get to, to the cellar and hide in the cellar. All right. Do you have any idea when this is going to happen? I believe sunset. Oh, well, that gives me a day to worry I, about it. Did you confirm? <laughs> I think it was sunset. Yeah, yeah. I mean, technically, it was moonrise, <laughs> but sunset, moonrise, similar. Do <laughs> little bit <laughs> of <it>. way early. <laughs> well, that gives me a whole day to worry about it. That's why I didn't let you know last night. I figured. Good night's sleep was more important. Wouldn't have slept a wink. Might not tonight. Might be for the best tonight if if anything does happen, but I made sure that you did sleep last night. <laughs> so I'll still be expecting people to come in around lunchtime. Should I tell them? I would say... I have conflicting feelings about this because I don't want everyone to go running into chaos. Uh, as much as I wish, because we don't have the backing of the guard right now, I think that it might be dangerous to start spreading rumors 
if if you will, even though we know that it's true. Um, I would say a little bit before sundown, everybody who you have in, in the bar, I would suggest you, you tell them to join you. Well, we haven't got that kind of reputation, but uh, I'm sure I can convince a few of them to stay and stick around and enjoy my lovely company. And she winks at you. <laughs> Do what you must, please. Just especially keep you safe. Thank you. And she grabs you by both hands. Thank you so much. Stay safe, would you? You're a good customer. We'll do our best. And uh, as you step away no, from her... Get her. As you step away from her, you see her kind of crack open uh, a thick jug that's uh, by the side of the bar and pour herself a rather uh, uh, thick-looking beer... Uh, and drink it down rather quickly um, before kind of nodding to herself and stepping back into the back. The three, are you heading out then? Yep. Yep. Yep, I'll follow them. Okay. Silas, you know where the, the main guard station is, which is probably where they're kept keeping Gaetano. It's an older building uh, made of stone, probably one of the oldest buildings in town, repurposed numerous times. Uh, formerly, you think, uh, according to the stories, it was formerly a windmill, but the actual mill itself has been taken down and the building kind of built onto. But a gray stone building that's weathered many storms uh, and has a, a bit of, of height so they can actually, t uh, from the top of the building, look out over a lot of the town. Um, outside, there are um, uh, guards basically um, getting their orders for the day. Um, you can hear uh, one of the one of the lieutenants or sergeants. You're not sure of the rank. Someone relatively in charge, um, telling them to uh, patrol the town. Uh, doesn't seem like anything particular. Just sort of patrolling the town. Uh, a notice about increased bandit activity closer and closer to the town, um, and there's some concern that there may be uh, something planned for today. Uh, there have been rumors going about that there have been some uh, some unusual folks spotted in the town uh, to keep an eye out for. And one of the... Um, I will, really on really our way place. to uh, where we're going, I will let uh, Medrick know that the spell will not work on me if I am in, in the area. Uh, I have something so that people don't know where I am. And it also prevents people from knowing if casting magic to know if I am lying or not. Huh, convenient. If I take it off, people will be able to find me. And as much as I'm not running away from them, I don't want them to know where I am right now. Understood. Um, one Just of the... so that if I'm in the area, he's not surprised all of a sudden. <laughs> That's absolutely fair. Um, one of the uh, the soldiers, uh, one of the guards, rather, um, who, uh, again, it's one of the, the people, Medrick, you, you recognize as having been a soldier. You don't know their name. Uh, it's a, uh, a young uh, human. Uh, kind of uh, always struck you as a little bit lazy on board the boat, mm -hmm. but uh, was a vicious <laughs> fighter when they actually got engaged in things. Uh, although you're having a hard time remembering that, you just remember the sense of that, uh, kind of reminding you almost of a cat. They kind of raise their hand and say, um, what sort of suspicious people? And the the sergeant uh, kind of rolls his eyes and sighs. There have been reports of shadowy people. That's literally what I've been hearing and what the reports have been saying. Nothing detailed. They haven't even been able to say that they've been breaking into things, just having been seen. We're getting reports of these for the last couple of days and... Frankly, I think people have been hitting the, the bottle too much, but we still should keep an eye out for them. Captain's orders. Kind of nods. Uh, and then uh, dismisses. It's about a half a dozen people there uh, heading off in pairs in three different directions. Um, two of them get on board, on board, climb up on horses, 
and ride off uh, to the uh, sort of northern part towards the King's Road. And then two go towards the east, the other two southward towards the dock. Uh, and the sergeant uh, kind of steps back. Uh, looks like they kind of step back into a guard role, uh, being out front. And, uh, uh, yeah, kind of standing there looking, not bored, but kind of not engaged in anything. Thoughts maybe further away. You walk up towards the, the guard. Uh, looks over, kind of uh, crossed arms. Good day. Good day. Could we speak to Captain Verandell? Maybe. What about? About the uh, prisoner they took from the Three Bells Inn yesterday. Hmm. That one. He claimed to be somebody and nobody believed him? Yeah. Complaint. Apparently said he was some sort of big muckety-muck. Frankly, you'd expect him to be wearing a little bit better clothes if that was the case. Maybe using a bit better language? Sounds like a sailor to me. A little bit too drunk. Anyway, uh, what if we could prove that he is who he says he is? Well, I mean, I can probably prove I'm your grandmother if I've given enough a chance. Can we what just... if we can prove that he's not lying specifically? Yeah. Well, I suppose the captain would like to hear about that. Fine. Go on in. But Thank mind you. yourselves. You draw a weapon here, we're going to kill you. No weapons drawn. Nothing, nothing less. Fine. He kind of waves you in. Kind of half bored already with the conversation. Uh, you get the impression that people kind of show up saying, I'm going to prove this and this, and yeah, it's mostly just horse manure. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling the truth. <laughs> I swear I didn't eat the thing you saw me eating. <laughs> you head inside, and the uh, first floor is this big open space. There's still the, the large spire, which once uh, held and once turned for the windmill, uh, now kind of just sort of sitting in the middle of the room. Uh, around the, the base of this room are numerous, um, I wouldn't say hastily installed, but not fancily installed uh, wooden, or not wooden, uh, metal cages, essentially. And you can see a couple of different people in uh, two or three of them. Uh, looks like most of them are sleeping. Across the back, you see kind of uh, sort of, Calmly sitting with his back to the corner, arms crossed, head kind of down a little bit, uh, is Gaetano. Uh, at the nearby desk, you see uh, the captain actually looking at several maps of the area. Look like hand-drawn maps under which uh, he's uh, uh, put uh, pins on the wall to try to uh, locate different things. Uh, the captain looks up as you enter. Oh, you again. What have Hello. you got to say to yourself today? What was that? You cut out a little bit. What have you got to say yeah. to yourself today? Any more stories? No, but no. we are here to uh, prove that this gentleman is not lying about his identity. Oh, really? <sighs> I don't want to look like a fool today like I did yesterday when I came in telling my own guards that we had to watch out for an invasion. Sea devils, yeah. Yeah. We have about eight hours left. I am not the most senior one here. I am in charge, but I do not appreciate being dressed down by some of my cohorts who are older than me and have recognized the ruse before I did. So... I'm not so sure your proof is going to be up to the necessary level to make sure that I am not going to be made a fool again. And no By magic, all means, if that's go what you're thinking. Get one of them. Sorry? By all means, go and get one of them. Please. My companion here has ways to make sure that people are not lying. 
ways to make sure people aren't lying. You mean magic, and don't you? Back. Yes, magic. Yes. I cast the spell. Anybody within a certain location is unable to lie. And, and how... as proof that it works, we can make sure that one of your men that are, have doubts are in the, the area as well, because they will feel the magics as well. They don't even need to say anything, and they will know what is going on. I wasn't born yesterday. I know that magics can change people's minds. How would I know that you're not simply fooling me again? Or trying like to? Like I said, like I said, you can put one of your men that you know and ask them a question that only you would know the answer to. That, that, that only they would know the answer to. So this is going to need to be a persuasion roll. Um, it sounds like Annie is leading it. Is someone going yeah, to... Yeah, I'll, I'll assist because... He knows um, the magic more than me. Okay. Yeah. I don't trust that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that is a natural 20 and a natural 19. Woo! So that comes to like a 26. Wow. Okay. Um, I think. He does... The captain's... <laughs> Still looks somewhat skeptical, but the very force of your argument and the the sort of you, you you think that it's probably the willingness that he could have anybody he wishes to be with him, and kind of while he knows that magic can fool one person and not usually good at fooling more than one, um, he uh, he seems to be a bit more convinced. But you can see the skepticism. You get the feeling like uh, yesterday he was extraordinarily convinced and then was dressed down. And he does not want to go through that again. And, and by all means, make sure it's one of your. You can have it one of your superiors that's with us. I can assure you, Miss, there's no one of higher rank here than me. Although, if this does turn out to be outside of my favor, I could very well see this getting back to the Baron and my position being somewhat in jeopardy. So I hope for your I sake. Promise you. I promise you that we are telling the truth and it's for everybody's interest that we are believed. Very well. And you see him go and up the curved stairs and yells up, uh, Reman, Reman, I'd like to see you, sir. And you get the weird feeling of him being still somewhat deferent even though he has already just said, I am the highest ranking person here, he called Reman, sir. Ooh. With a few minutes, uh, down comes a uh, an older looking uh, man. Very rough looking. Um, he's got scars on his face, very thick hands, um, solid sword by his side. Not the standard sword of a guard. You get the feeling that this one was made for him, uh, just from the way that it balances on his belt. And thinning uh, blonde hair, um, uh, clean shaven, uh, but with that sort of leftover shadow, probably hasn't been shaved in a couple of days, uh, looking down, hard eyes, uh, and he steps down, nods, Captain, you wanted to see me? Yes, Raven. Yesterday, I was given some assurance of this man's identity, points at uh, Gitano. Right. And you're made a damn sight fool for believing it. This woman who made the assertion has assured me that this one, and kind of gestures toward Medric, has the ability to ensure that truth is spoken. And he seems very hesitant. Um, Riemann just sort of snorts. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh. You're an Ignian. Hmm. hmm. Well, this should there prove it. I can cast. What was that? Oh, go ahead. I just missed what you said. Uh, he just said, this should prove interesting. There's a spell I can cast where if somebody is in a certain area, they have to tell the truth. So I'll cast this spell. 
you can hear my suggestion is to have someone answer. that you trust in the area as well let themselves be affected by the spell so that you can see that we are that it the spell does do what we are claiming it does exactly and Reeman kind of stares at Medric for a moment and you see his eyes kind of following along the symbol of Ignis. It doesn't take an insight to check uh, check to to realize that he may have a bone to pick with the Ignians. And you see him kind of reach back and just sort of move his hand along the edge of a burn scar that is along the back of his or the side of his neck. And he puts his hand on the hilt of his sword and stares straight at Midric. Let's get this over with then. And find out right. how much of a fool my captain has been twice. So I will cast the spell. It will not work. And, and I, I do make sure that both uh, Uzwin and the person know. This does not work if you resist the magic. If you resist it, then we cannot prove our point. And Uswin has, uh, or Gitano has at this point, he's been kind of watching subtly, didn't move much, just sort of lifted his head, and you get the impression he was never asleep. Uh, he oh, heard no, every single not. word, uh, but is kind of looking with a little bit of amusement towards both Riemann and the captain, and kind of looking at uh, you, Annie, with a little bit of... of is that respect? Do you think it's respect? At the very least, it's not uh, not the same amusement as the other two. So, Medric, you cast this this spell. What does the spell look like to you? What? How do you make it look? I'll draw a circle around, like, well, around the zone, basically. I'll stand in the middle, do a quick prayer, close my eyes, and then everything is going to feel warmer a little bit inside the circle. Not not like painfully warm, but just nice warm. Like you're in bed morning, kind of warm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I kind of imagine that the air shimmers and shifts a little bit as though there's a, a you know, an actual heat wave kind of blowing in the area. A little bit of glow. Where are you casting this? It has a 15 foot radius. Yeah. So I'm casting it uh, next to the cell Gaetano was in. Okay. Um, so that way it'll like, reach all the way inside his cell and it'll reach the people. Like, it'll reach Captain Verindel and, uh, what's his name? Raymond. Raymond. Okay. As you, you focus on the spirit of Ignis, the internal flame which burns ever bright, and the, the space sort of, in your mind, in your mind's eye, it kind of ignites. You kind of see that magical effect of your own. Um, burns away any lies. Make your <laughs> fire spell damage. All right. Mm. Ah, damn it. Where is it? <laughs> okay. So the so flames briefly ignite around Medric and kind of... In, in some ways, it's like there was a, uh, a flammable gas in the ring that as the flames from you burn up and flare, that sort of triggers the effect like burning uh, uh, propane or something. Yeah. Uh, Riemann doesn't flinch. Actually, sorry, Riemann does flinch uh, and steps back a half foot. Uh, the captain looks a little bit alarmed, and you can see that he too has also put his hand on the hilt of his sword, cross sword, as opposed to Riemann, who has it on his uh, right hip with his right hand. Um it's not going to hurt you guys, just me. So, what is the saving throw? Charisma. Uh, it is. What is, the, what is the target? Twelve. <laughs> Although, if they're if they're uh, voluntarily giving into it, mm -hmm. then yeah. they just fail to save. Yep. Okay. And he knows if anyone succeeds. Okay. Uh, Riemann has definitely resisted. 
And Do I feel standing, that? You definitely feel that. Oh, you yeah. feel as though the, the heat uh, is kind of rebuffed uh, in that direction. He's standing there. He does not want to have this effect happen over him. And he's looking Raven. very certain at you. Did the did the captain let it happen? The captain let it happen, and so did uh, Uswin. And you happen to catch another of the uh, prisoners is in the same uh, cage as Uswin, who kind of looks up uh, with some surprise, eyes wide. Uh, an older guy, kind of thin, uh, looks like he's probably sleeping off the rest of a terrible hangover. Uh, and he has no idea what's going on. He literally woke up to the feeling of the truth. <laughs> Remit is resisting. I will say out loud. I know better than let some ignorant in my head. Then you will have to take the captain's word. No. Captain, do you feel that you currently can lie? I am... Um... I, I've never felt like this before. I've had some magic cast on me, but this is different. And he looks a little bit fearful, kind of almost at the admission. Um, and Remen kind of snorts. You're afraid of it, aren't you? I, I am. Oh dear. But do you feel that you can lie? You see him kind of screw up his face kind of with determination I cannot and there's a surprise that comes across his face tell me my name is Riemann your name isn't his name is Riemann I don't know you're a marsh aren't you yes uh. And there's nothing to be afraid of, Captain Verandel. This magic does not affect you internally. I can't see inside your mind or read your thoughts. It's only the way your thoughts come out that can be interpreted. Well, this is somewhat disturbing. Perhaps effective. Uh, he turns You need towards... to take a break if you feel freaked out, and you can step outside the circle and come back in later. Uh, you see him kind of uh, nod his head and then then kind of immediately straighten his shoulders uh, as if to to uh, to answer Riemann's uh, sort of unspoken uh, sarcasm. Uh, I'm going to be over this eventually, he says. You get the impression he was trying to say something else, but that's what came out. <clears throat> you there. Is your name Gaetano? And Gaetano stamps up and goes, It is a name I use, yes. It is. That's not his name. What's it, not his voice? What the hell? Who is he? <laughs> this is an imposter. <laughs> uh, and your yeah. other name? Gaetano is a name that I use. And are you... I know that I'm not allowed to, or not able to say that uh, any other than the truth right now, but I must admit, I still find this rather outrageous. <clears throat> you, sir, are you also known as Sir Oswin Mundo of the, of the Seven? And Gaetano smiles wide. That is my proper name, yes. Don't worry about it, kid. You weren't supposed to know. But circumstances have changed. What are you doing here? The captain blurts out. I, I, um, I have a mission to find, well, following certain rumors that some sailors have said at sea. So you're not here for this invasion? I am today. Why are they standing up for you? And he kind of gestures towards the three of you. And you see Gaetano struggling. They know who I am. And do you know who they are? Yes, I do. 
Right then. Who are they? Oh, this is interesting. Uh, Who we are, of, are is of no concern. I'm Medrick. You've met me before. Uh, Gitano kind of stays mum, and it's clear that he's not saying anything. Um, kind of resisting it. I see. We will have to talk about this again. Are you satisfied, Riemann? And Riemann just sort of looks over. You're still a fool. Maybe he is who he says he is. For now. You've seen that Captain Verendel was not harmed by the magic. What's the harm in just letting it affect you? Just to see for yourself. Magic is not something to be trifled with. It will hurt you. It only hurts me. Ignis is magic, that is. And he kind of, once again, you see him subconsciously touch the scar on the side of his neck. We're done here. What happened there on your neck? Magic will hurt you. Never trust it. And he turns and walks up the stairs. <laughs> Who pissed in his cornflakes? Riemann, I think, was supposed to be in my position before I was transferred here from Pitajun. I believe he harbors a bit of resentment about that. He's been at this position longer than anyone, and I, I need him in order to make it work. And just before this, we leave this circle, Sir Oswind, we are telling the truth about the Sea Devil attack, correct? So far as I know, I didn't speak to them directly. That one, Silas did. But so far as I know, they're planning something. And this seems just as reasonable as anything else. Or unreasonable, depending on how you think about it. Yeah, I believe them, Captain. And I believe we've lost a bit of time. I don't want to drink, but I have to, the old man in the bottom of the... The cell kind of spouts out. Oh. It's the only way to keep the dreams at bay. Why did what I dreams? say that? Bad dreams. His eyes go wide and he kind of looks at you. Terrible dreams. I can have them now if I'm not careful. I was sleeping, yeah. but the drink the took dream. them all away. Took every dream away. I need more. I need it. I don't want it. I, I need it. Well, the Three Bells makes some good drinks. I got thrown out of there. And you can feel him kind of uh, touching the back of his head. Maybe an old injury. <laughs> Frying pan injury. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what happens in the dreams? Darkness. It takes everything. It takes your soul. It's coming for us all. I don't know what to do about it. Nobody believes me. I don't want anybody to believe me. I just want to make it go away. And, uh, Usman re reaches down and kind of puts his hand on his shoulder. Maybe you should step out of the circle, buddy. This isn't good for you. And he kind of gently moves him to the back of the, the, the cage. And he's kind of steps and pushes him outside of the edge of the effect. Uh, the man's, uh, whole demeanor changes. He gets a lot less desperate. And he kind of swallows... And, and kind of starts muttering to himself a little quietly in the corner. I'll look at him and say, I believe you. We'll try to make it go away. It's too late. And he kind of goes catatonic at that point. We have to get moving. Captain, if you don't mind opening this door. <laughs> Any more questions? <sighs> well, I'd still like to know... All who you are that have this sort of knowledge, I'm looking over at Annie. But, I suppose... Let's just say it's safer for you to not know who I am. <laughs> I rarely think it's safer for me, to, for me to not know things. My own guards have kept a few things from me, and I've not been pleased about that either. Still, and he goes over to a heavy key ring. Now, you, pointing to the, the older... 
drunk. Stay back. I wouldn't want to have to lay a hand on you. And he opens up the door. Uh, Gaetano steps through and puts his uh, hand heavily on uh, the captain's shoulder. You can see the captain flinch a little bit. Um, there's a certain sort of maybe paternal or condescending, unintentionally condescending mode that this seems to reflect in the captain. Uh, but the uh, but Gitano simply says, it's all right, kid. You were good to be suspicious. I'm not sure I would have believed me either, but she can be rather convincing. And uh, look nods over towards what Annie. <laughs> Indeed. Now, if you don't mind, uh, Cleric, if you can remove this spell, it's a little bit disturbing. Oof, it's gone. Right. Certainly. So, I suppose we need to make some plans. The guards have already been sent out for the daily duties. I can recall some of them, but... Uh, I have let the innkeeper at the Three Bells know, because we've been there for, for a while and have helped her, and she trusts me. Uh, I've instructed her to barricade the, the inn, and hide in the cellar with whatever customer she has in the end when it happens. That's good thinking, kid. We should probably spread but the news across we'll, town if anybody would believe it. Well, without the backing of the guard, that's as much as I really could do. I'm afraid a story like what you're proposing is going to be difficult without um, you repeatedly casting that spell, Cleric, but... Uh, there might be a more palatable story, something we can give them, which is going to be a little bit more understandable. Well, there has been a problem with bandits recently, correct? That is true. They have been striking just, closer uh, and closer to town. Strongly, we could strongly encourage people to lock their doors and barricade the inside because of bandits. An attack on the town from bandits. Or pirates. I don't know. Gitano kind of laughs. Pirates? Well, you know, I wouldn't be too worried about them coming up anytime soon. Even they know to keep away in this kind of weather. But it's a more believable story than sea devils. And it will keep people away from the water. Indeed. Uh, I'll need to make a report to the Baron. He'll want to know right away. He may have some other suggestions about how to keep things safe, but it's going to take me a little while to get there. Um, I'm going to need to leave Riemann in charge of the organization, I think, while I'm gone. I'll speak to him. Do you trust him? Trust has never been the issue with Riemann. It's more of... support, I suppose. He's very rarely wrong, and his word carries a lot of weight. If what he saw here convinced him, then, then we should be fine. I just... It he'll still manage to do the job. It just, um... Well, it's best that I speak to the Baron myself before Riemann gets word to him, I think. Hmm. Do you need any of us to go with you? No, I, I think I think it'd be better if the three of you are able to help with the arrangements in town. We have more guards that can be recalled, and I'll I'll send I'll send Nathan outside to go collect them. He won't like it because he just gave them their duties for the day, and if we get some that are off duty, I'll make sure that they're roused as well. Most of them are soldiers, so I suppose they're used to being roused early. <sighs> How much of an attack do we expect? I'm... I turn to Silas. <laughs> I'll look at Silas, too. <laughs> so he said, how much of an attack do we expect? Yeah. I don't know their numbers, but... They seem to quite seriously believe that they could destroy the town. 
they want to eradicate us. They're not just here to raid. Oh my! They took this lighthouse too. If they found a way to weaponize it, we could be in trouble. I don't know what you mean by that. What stone? You mean the light? The light. That used to be in the lighthouse. You've probably noticed it's been more dim in the last few days. I have. We made a delivery to the lighthouse. And while we were there, the sea devils attacked and took the light. What what good is a light? What was that? What good is a light? Silas looks over at Medrick and just is kind of... What did you say, though, the (laughs) market? What good is a light? What good is a light? Well, it keeps the ships from crashing into... I know what it does for the lighthouse, but why are you worried about them having the light? It's really bright. Think of that. Think of how bright the lighthouse light has to be to reach where it is, where it goes. So they're going if, to. If they sh- manage to direct that light in a very condensed fashion, they, they would like very easily find them. I see. The lighthouse keeper needs to wear gog- special goggles to not be blinded by it when he's working near it. I see. Imagine wow. what hundreds of people exposed to that closely. Well, that yeah, does pose a she problem. She has better words than I do. And I'll point to Annie. <laughs> <laughs> words that is my job. Maybe a bit of luck, however. A light that bright will be seen from quite some distance, will it not? Yeah. Might give us a chance to... To rally, I suppose. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to speak to Remen. We'll get our guards moved. I'm not sure where. Maybe the seawall? After all of this, I think we should possibly, if possible, have a meeting with the Baron. Over a pint of ale, for sure. Or several. Over. Uh, you, you see a look cross across the captain's face when you mention uh, over a, cro- a pint of ale, uh, as if you know the, the notion of meeting with royalty is over a pint of ale is so beneath both of them at this point. Um, I don't think it would be a casual conversation. I'm going to make a report. I suppose you can come with me. Perhaps it would be better if it came from you anyway. It'll need my support. I'll I'll work with Riemann. I know his type. Thanks. I'm afraid he knows your type, too, or thinks he does. Yeah. I know his type very well. And, uh... Captain... Yeah. <clears throat> I don't mean to step above you here, but... Would you consider it all right if I disciplined some of your men, some of your guards? And the captain blanches. I don't think... Um, if you must, sir, just uh, call me Gaetano. It's a little bit easier right now. I don't think I can do that, sir. Right. And he stomps upstairs to meet Riemann. You're not sure what that meeting's going to be like. It's probably going to involve a fist fight. <laughs> we should go right away. Well, I'll leave word with Nathan should. outside. He'll gather the guards that are available. Are you all coming with me then? I definitely will be. Same. So we're going to meet the Baron? The Baron. Okay. Sure. I've never met him. Do you have horses? It was suggested that that I make connections with him, and this seems like the most realistic way to get in there without showing my papers. (laughs) How long is the trip to see the Baron? 
The Baron lives on the bluff, and you know from the distance you travel to get back to the village, it's about a half an hour just to get to the base of the bluff. It's going to take 45 minutes probably to, to get up there. Okay, but it's not going to be half a day to get there. No. Not likely, no. Okay. Uh, does he have horses that we could borrow? Do, does the captain have horses that we could borrow for the to get there faster? I can take a couple of the guard's horses. I tell him I've got one. Very well. You can see him kind of trying to gear himself up, trying to to mentally prepare. Um, The idea of presenting to the Baron does not fill him with happiness. If anything, it fills him with a lot of apprehension. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that he felt like he'd been dressed down in the last 24 hours by a junior, technically a junior, um, but someone who he does respect somehow with Riemann. Um, But nonetheless, he looks around his office uh, kind of as if he has anything he needs to grab. And then uh, sighs, steps outside, speaks to Nathan, uh, speaks to, uh, tells him, first of all, to go fetch someone to, to, uh, to stand stand watch and then send runners to gather the guard and meet at the seawall. Um, did you tell the captain when this was going to happen? Yes. Okay. We, we had mentioned it the day before, but we would make sure that every, to try okay. to get sure everything was ready by, by sundown. Nathan looks rather incredulous at this, looks at the three of you as if, what did you do to my captain? Uh, but nods his head, accepts the order, uh, and they'll they'll meet by the seawall for later today. Uh, and the captain gets a little bit snippy with Nathan. Nathan kind of asks, somewhat innocently, everyone? Everyone, damn it. Just bring them and make sure they're ready to go. All, all right, sir. You go to the small stables attached to the side of the guardhouse. He points to a couple of horses that have been basically resting, but they're ready to go. You get the impression they're kind of kept ready, um, ready for uh, travel. Um, there is a uh, just a couple of, of small... Uh, let me see. I should probably look up my own horses. I'm not going to look up my own horses. Small brown horses. Um, Medrick, um, the one that you are, are given to ride eyes you rather suspiciously. And you get the feeling that the very warmth that you always exude makes the animal somewhat nervous. I won't like mount it right away. I'll just kind of like I didn't do that thing where I let it sniff my hand, and it's like, look, I'm not going to hurt you. Make a hit animal handling check. Good boy. <laughs> I toss him a sugar cube. Well, a sugar piece. Do you catch it, Medrick? Yeah. It's tasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, are you helping the horse? <laughs> uh, I'll give yeah, you advantage. Yeah, so I'll catch the sugar cube and feed it to the horse. <laughs> I'll give you advantage on that roll because Silas is helping you with the horse. Thanks, bro. Advantage didn't help you, but 14. Um, it seems to be sl- somewhat contented, maybe more distracted than contented. Um, and you do kind of uh, mount the horse... It, it, it steps a couple of steps and, and sort of like and cranes its neck to look back at you. Uh, when it, it clearly doesn't get any pain from the heat, it if horses could shrug, it may have just done that. Uh, and the heat will keep it warm when we go outside if it's cool. I automatically go to my saddle and then I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, it, it's... It's it's a good it's a good saddle, not uh, not the best quality you were used to. Um, there's a bit of a crack in the leather at the top. It hasn't entirely been as kept well as it should. Um, you can kind of you feel almost uh, not embarrassment, but more probably uh, just disappointment in whoever was keeping these saddles. wasn't oiling them every day and wasn't necessarily keeping uh, proper uh, saddle etiquette. Uh, in contrast. The captain's own saddle looks immaculate. Uh, it looks like it's very well kept. And he also kind of uh, uh, speaks to his horse. You get the impression that they've been together for quite some time. 
part of me kind of misses my horse. Oh. <laughs> moment, moment of like, this will do. <laughs> the rest of you aims harder. Um, the uh, captain leads you towards the, uh, the Raven's Bluff. This massive rock um, promontory, essentially, uh, which juts out into the sea. Uh, at this point, we're reaching the first high tide, and so you can see the water at the very base has has uh, started to accumulate. Uh, the path that you, Silas, would have taken this morning uh, is already obscured over by water, uh, and to get home would take the longer route at this point. Um, it probably was uh, a, a solitary rock at one point. Uh, it's got that sort of gray-brown look to it, a little bit of vegetation growing up around the uh, the edges of it, uh, a tree stuck kind of halfway up on one side, almost jutting out the side as if it had been there before everything else had changed. Uh, and over time, uh, a slope has essentially been carved out of the back of this. Uh, and you proceed uh, through the, I think it's the uh, Totenwald, if I remember correctly. I really should look this up. Um, I have the names here somewhere, but I'm not going to look this up right now, except I'm going to look this up right now because now I want to know. <laughs> uh, it is the Totenwald. The Totenwald runs, that's the thicker, more um, denser, older forest that is to the north and to the west of, uh, of Eilthvater. You leave the town proper behind, and then there's just this stretch where uh, a well-worn, uh, bricked-up road not as well kept as the King's Road itself, but still a, a, an actually maintained road leads. Uh, it's a lonely travel along the way. There's not really any traffic in this particular direction. The clouds have darkened overhead. The distant roll of thumber, thunder has gotten stronger and stronger. And as you start to ride towards the base of Raven's Bluff, the rain starts. Little spits and spats at first, uh, but then a cold wind blows in with it. Uh, causing the rain to pick up a little bit in, in periodic waves and then almost below sideways. It's very, very chilly. And at this point, Medric, your horse is very happy to have a very warm rider on its back. Uh, it even seems to almost steam a little bit from the extra heat uh, provided. Uh, the, the captain uh, pulls down his uh, hood to shield his face from the, the uh, chilling wind uh, but seems determined. You ride at a, at a decent pace, not a super brisk one, but one which is, I guess it would be called the canter, uh, partially because of the hard road. It's a bit of a quicker travel than it would be over land, um, but at the same time, the wind and the rain make it a little bit slower, so it's, it's a compromise between the two of those. As you start to rise up the bluff itself, you can see the manner in which the uh, baron and baroness live. Uh, what was probably at one point an ancient lighthouse, uh, but now that one solitary tower has been joined by three others, uh, forming a, a almost a castle-like appearance um, with uh, large walls. Uh, it, 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 it probably was a fort after it was a lighthouse, and now has been turned into a, a sort of manor house uh, inside as well. You can see that it's been built up inside um, with wooden floors, uh, set in the center, as opposed to stone, which surrounds it. Um, the light grows dimmer as the clouds grow, grow thicker, and you uh, ride up the hill. Um, it, there's a bit of a chill in the air that, in particular, I think Annie would be the one most susceptible to it. Silas, this is not unlike a day at sea, which, while you haven't done that as much as you used to, you grew up in the midst of it, and it reminds you very strongly of that. In fact, it reminds you very strongly of that day. Now, you weren't at sea that particular day. You were at home. There was some business to be taken care of. So your wife went to sea instead. That day was stormy. The water was choppy. There was that smell distinctly of, of fish and of salt and of something ominous in the air you kind of had a feeling that morning. There was just something about the way that she said, I'll see you later. Like she'd said dozens of times before. But that day, 
That day was different. And it was the last day you saw her. The storms came in. Three ships, three, three boats, rather, had been overturned. Everyone else had made it back safely, except for her. They described it almost as though the sea rose up and specifically tried to take people off the boats. Waves can get pretty harsh sometimes. They're unfeeling, unstoppable. Maybe they shouldn't have even gone out that day, and you certainly argued that. But the family moved on. Grieved. Left an honorarium, left a memoriam, but moved on. A little quicker maybe than you did. This moment, this weather feels like that again. Hmm. Silas just feels a little morose. Uh, one thing to note, though, uh, Silas never goes out on the ships. Uh, he's a weak guy. He doesn't do that. He would have been, uh, when he was a kid, they would have made him go out, but they would quickly realize he's not worth going out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but uh, his wife was uh, much stronger, and she was on the boats quite consistently. Okay. But, um, so it was a bit but of yeah. He, uh, um, but yes. He's a little saddened by the weather and a little distressed by the feeling. But he won't say anything. Okay. It's an auspicious day to meet the Baron. This is probably not going to be good, is running through your mind. Lightning crashes on the trees somewhere back in the Totenwald. You hear... I'll be right back. You hear the universe pause for a second. <laughs> As the universe takes a drink. Lag. <laughs> This pause brought to you by nothing. There are no sponsors, <laughs> nor will there ever likely be. Brought to, brought to you by reality. It gets in the way sometimes, but I can't do without it. Yeah. <laughs> brought to you by water. It's like wet and everything. Cat mommy is going. <laughs> <laughs> Before you, you She's see the, the manor house. It's been about 50 minutes in total of traveling, uh, and the wind has been pushing against you this entire time. Um, nonetheless, the captain seems to be still sitting strongly in his, in his saddle. Um, in a way, even though initially when he started this out, he was dreading the experience, you get the impression that as he moves closer and closer, um, there's sort of an old set of protocols that were drilled into him or something where he knows how to be a proper, uh, respectful uh, representative towards nobility. It's almost as though while he's, he's dreading the report itself, he is looking forward to being amongst noble people, maybe? Could be Riemann's company has not been happy for him as well. The front gates are closed. There is a very soggy-looking... Uh, guardsman at the door actually sorry would be at the wall overhead calls down and the captain uh, calls up to him uh, we have business with the baron I'm afraid there is an impending invasion he kind of regrets the word choice but the the guard at the top of the wall does a double take um what did you say just open the door, Bob. Just open the door. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> um, there was a bit of con, con, uh, con, condensation? No, condescendingness in that, uh, in that as well. You get the impression that it's another one of the guardsmen, and technically all the guardsmen work directly for the captain. Even the ones here probably get in regular rotation, so it's not everybody gets to have the, the sweet job at the... Uh, or rather, everybody gets a chance to have their sweet job at the, at the Baron's estate. Within a few minutes, uh, word is given. The doors are opened wide. Large, heavy, wooden doors. They clearly look like they've been reinforced with metal as well. 
and you are led into the uh, interior. It's grass in here, and in fact, it's quite a sharp contrast from the, the dark, heavy, old-growth woods outside. Inside here, everything seems to be well-maintained. Uh, you get the impression that uh, there is got to be at least one, if not five people on staff, just meant to keep the interior of this looking beautiful. It's late in the year, so a lot of the flowers have faded, but different flowers have been kind of planted in their place. Uh, there is a beautiful uh, fountain in the center of the uh, the green that's there. Uh, its its spray is off kilter from where it should normally be, given the strong winds, uh, and kind of now splashing down upon the grass, probably making a mess in that particular spot. You let over to the stables, the horses. Uh, there's a, a a young uh, stable guard there, or stable um, uh, worker. I forget the name of it, at the moment. Uh, but she takes the the reins and uh, talks to the horses more than you guys. You get the impression that she's probably more uh, more there for the horses than the guests. Uh, although there is a curt nod and uh, and respectful uh, distance kept. Um, the uh, captain. Already, there's no no one there to greet you. The captain seems to know where to go, uh, and uh, you're led in through the stables now, kind of keeping uh, an over uh, an overhang of the the pathway, which has been been kind of built uh, from the stables to the main building. The main building itself it appears to be uh, a uh, a wooden multi-story building. Uh, a very uh, dark wood, probably from the Toten Vault itself. Uh, very ancient uh, wood built up uh, in the in the sort of center, but with uh, wings that go off in the different directions and towards the different towers as well. Um, and you and the captain walks strides forward, um, stops at one point. Um, hmm. Uh, yeah, stops at one point towards uh, an entrance, essentially. You come through, and there's an open entrance, and there's a, a warm fire that's blazing in a, in a, uh, a wooden stove there uh, and tells you to wait there uh, as he goes to introduce himself to the Baron, and then we'll wave you guys in. Uh, stay here for a moment and get dry. It wouldn't do to have you dripping all over the Baron's carpets. The Baroness would probably have more to say about than him, I suppose. Still, if you've not met the Baron before, and I doubt that any of you have, uh, a few words of caution. The Baron does not suffer fools, which I am hoping word from Raymond's assessment hasn't reached his ears yet, or this is going to be a much more complicated conversation than I wish it to be. The Baroness will ask questions. The Baron will not ask many. The Baroness is to be addressed directly. The Baron is to be heard. Is that made clear? So of course. the Baron talks to us, but we don't talk to him? That is general. Unless the, yes. All right, so we talk to the Baroness only. Do we look at the Baron? Or? Well, yes. I, he can be, be held with the eyes, of course. He's, he's, all right. But... Just be respectful uh, and try to do something about, and he kind of waves his hands, uh, kind of gesturing at the, the soggy mess that all of you are in. Try to do something about this. I believe there's some some towels over there and there's some heat. I'll try Silas, to... Silas prestidigitates the water off his coat, his oiled coat. Yeah, bad. Then he'll turn to the others. Can you prestidigitate the carpet too? <laughs> now, the water's kind of I, I would have somewhere. worn some of my nicer clothes because I saw this going one of two ways and both of them involved probably nicer clothes. Mm -hmm. So after you kind of take off the heavy outer cloak, you've got a... What, what kind of clothes are you wearing? Um, It's... They're just still travel clothes, but not as tattered. Um, They're much more put together, but still on that, like, level of working clothes. Okay. Uh, N so nothing fancy, fancy, but fancy is in terms of what she usually wears. Okay. 
Silas used a disguised self to make himself look roughly the same, but more cleaned up, and his clothes look nicer. Okay. Um, the, the, the magic settles over Silas, uh, giving him uh, probably more like your performance clothes, I suppose? Uh, no, they look just like what he's wearing, just in better condition. They've got like so, uh, some extra little highlights and such. Okay. He's just he's dressed the same. He's just looking a lot better. Okay. Um, having seen just the, having seen the illusion cast, you know that the, uh, you kind of have some insight into the not realness of the clothing he's wearing, but it seems to be convincing at least for the moment. Um. The captain has strode off and leaves you there for about uh, 15 minutes on your own. Doesn't seem to be anyone else that comes in. Um, you can look around. You can note the the uh, deep, dark wood of all of the the uh, fixtures. There's There seems to be a, a waiting chamber, um, probably where they bring people uh, specifically to... to uh, Kind of be greeted rather than going in, um, but he's told you to wait here. For you, Annie, this is not an uncommon space where they would stick, say, the unexpected diplomat or the merchant who's come to complain to the king or uh, the the uh, the the relative who's not like the top tier relative is probably a cousin of a cousin, and yet still tries far enough that everybody has the time to get ready between like them get the person going to tell people that they're there coming back and us going there they'll be ready for us <laughs> something like that yeah yeah the 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 the, the antechamber the keeping room um it's a little bit weird to see it from this angle but that's what you recognize it as you were probably snuck closer to see it on occasion to see all the weird diplomats that come in uh you remember seeing a, a triton once uh, standing in your your uh, parents uh, antechamber looking very uncomfortable probably missing the sea more than anything else in their uh, sort of blue, uh, blue-skinned and finned uh, ways. After about 15 minutes, um, the uh, captain comes, comes uh, striding back. Um, he looks... He looks calm. It would seem... It would seem that Riemann's stock has not been as strong as I had feared. I have told them that uh, there is a concern of, of immediate nature uh, and that you were the ones who had more information and might be able to make an appeal. I... We should go. And he turns and, and leads you into the other room. And really, it's down a, a long hallway. Outside of this room are uh, are standing uh, a, a man and a woman, both formally dressed. Uh, the uh, the woman uh, opens up one side of the door. The man opens up the other. Uh, for you, Annie, it's the these are the closest servants, most likely, uh, the ones that directly serve the Baron and Baroness uh, in their in their needs and are on standby a lot. You've seen this kind of servant numerous times, and well, they kind of got to know you a little bit, although they, every once in a while they would sort of snap to attention, remembering who you were. Uh, and they sometimes they would let slip the complaints about sore feet or backs that were getting a little bit tired of standing all day when there wasn't anything specifically for them to do, that sort of thing. But they don't know who you are here. Also, like, mine in that position would end up being very close to me. I'm pretty chill. I'm like, just sit down then. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. Here, though, they are, are stern and serious. Um, all three of you yeah. can make insight checks, actually, as you walk closer. No. Oh, maybe. Eleven. Wow. Three. All of us roll 11. Everybody roll 11. That's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. That's that's like the universe telling me something. Um, uh, what you do notice, though, all three of you kind of notice as they as they come forward, they look at the captain and then they kind of look at the three of you. Uh, and there's a glance that goes between the two of them. I'm not sure what the glance means, but it seems like they 
there's something that they recognized. Uh, the captain, seemingly either already having noticed something or just ignoring everything, walks purposely towards the door, and they quickly open up the two doors and let you in. Now, inside... In my brain, I'm going over how people address me versus how I address people. <laughs> uh Inside, uh, first of all, the captain stops at the threshold and uh, waits for a second. Uh, within, there's a, 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 a man's voice, somewhat um, lax, uh, but nonetheless, it has that edge of, of culture, edge of, 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 uh, of command, but not, not urgent. And just simply says, come in. And the uh, captain uh, stops, bows his head on the threshold, and then steps forward. Um, I'll just copy whatever the captain says, and like I'll bow to and walk in. Okay. I could. And so, how does Silas approach the door? <laughs> uh, he'll just he'll follow the others, and he'll bow uh, to whoever seems to need to have a a bow aimed at them. <laughs> As you enter the room. Um, it's not necessarily what you might have expected. It's not a throne room as such. Instead, there is a very uh, uh, elaborately carved dark wooden chair. Looks like it's got uh, a, a almost a beet red leather um, that sort of glistens a little bit in torchlight uh, in one space. And in that sits a uh, middle-aged man, a little slightly graying around the temples, uh, has a, a, a short, very well-coiffed, uh, dark beard and mustache, uh, kind of almost a goatee, but not quite so long, very well-kept hair, uh, dressed very conservatively. There's no flash or bling. Uh, it is a deep blue color of, of clothing, of, of shirt with matching pants. Um, has a serious expression on his face. Uh, almost a little bit tired, it's a, kind of a weird word to say, but maybe it's the middle of the day and really, I don't know, important people don't wake up that early. It's hard to say. Um, that's on one side. On the other side of the room is a much more elaborate uh, round bowl-like chair in which there is a, a number of pillows gathered and a, a thin veil of, of uh, semi-translucent uh, silk kind of draped down over it. And in there you can see a woman lounging quite comfortably, um, kind of almost half not seen. Um, details are difficult to make out through, through the, the gauze of, the, of the, uh, the fabric itself. Um, and then there's the, a couple of, of, uh, of flickering candelabras in this room. Uh, there are no windows that you can see in this room. And it feels kind of, kind of flat. There's no heat, no cold in this room. The air is kind of still. Uh, the captain uh, walks to the center of the room. Um, my Lord Baron, uh, my Lady Baroness, uh, as I said, this is a matter of some urgency um, that these people can um, elaborate on. Uh, as I had indicated, um, one of the seven is here in the village, um, Sir Oswin Mundo, and uh, I've come to discover this um, with these people's... You feel him faltering a little bit, almost as though he was completely certain up to this point. Now he's sort of falling apart a little bit, uh, as if trying to... As if the story that once he believed, then was told was foolish to believe, then believes again, is starting to cause him some, some concern again. Whiplash. <laughs> kind of, yeah. And now he's sort of, oh crap, I'm really here. I'm really talking to the Baron about this. And I don't know enough. Um, Sir Mundo indicated that there was other business in the area to be, to be looked at. Um, but the three of them have come to my attention. Uh, there is... Um, well, uh, an attack is impending when the Baron's eyebrow kind of rises. From within the, uh, the uh, gauze and on the chair, you hear the voice of the Baroness. 
which is very confident. It's one of those slightly di deeper pitched voices, very, very smooth and very, very confident. Whereas the Baron, uh, who hasn't spoken up to, the, up to this point, but you'll hear his voice and it's somewhat hollow and somewhat uh, uh, thin, still confident, but, uh, but not, uh, not as smooth perhaps as hers. And she speaks, then let us hear it from them. You there, and you get the general impression that the, she's pointing at Silas. Tell me what you know of this attack. Uh, well, my lady, there are sea devils living under the bay. We encountered them when rescuing uh a young woman sorry silas is not an old guy uh when rescuing a woman from uh, from, uh who was stolen from the lighthouse uh while we were down there we also encountered three other prisoners who we released and found proof that the sea devils were about to launch an attack uh in fact they are going uh, they uh, they will be attacking at uh sunfall we do not know their numbers but we believe they have stolen something that they think will make them powerful enough to eradicate the town are we in danger I do not know. I know that they hate all of the surface dwellers, but I do not know if they intend to attack further than just the town uh, or exactly how far they will go before they stop. Who are you? Says the Baron. My name is Silas Marsh. I live... Uh, in a small village outside of Ilfater. A marsh comes to us with this information. That's interesting. I hadn't heard your family taking much interest in the town. I spend much more time in the town than my family does. I am an entertainer at the docks. And who are you, dear? Pointing towards Annie. My name is Annie Grace. I'm an apprentice to one of the seven. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. Shoot, I can't remember the name of that. Uh, <clears throat> I should have had that. There we go. Um, In your mind. Oh, nope, never mind, actually. Never mind at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, what do you know of sea devils? Only what I've experienced in the past two days. Are they... As... Worthy creatures? As I... Are they worthy creatures? Uh, they, they put up quite a fight. We've only ever dealt with three at a time, three or four at a time, and it was quite difficult to manage. And what threat do they really pose? As we've said, we don't know their numbers. But if many of them are coming, as they implied, then it could be quite dangerous for not, not only the people, but the people are what bring you money at the end of the day. And there's kind of moves and sits back a little bit in her chair. 
Um, again, you can't really make out the full form uh, through this sort of gauzy haze. You're only seeing a little shadow, if you will. And you, you're clearly one of the followers of Ignis. Aren't I you? am, my lady. What is your name? My name is Medric. I am a Kamar. The Flame Keeper must be very pleased to see another of her kind here. She is, I, I believe. What do you make of this threat? Are they dangerous? Yes. As Annie Grace has said, we've only encountered three, maximum four at a time, and we are trained. Most of the civilians on the dock are not. It, it seems that as soon as you're bleeding, they go after you even harder. Depending on their numbers, this could end up in an absolute slaughter. What strange behavior. They use different weapons because they're used to fighting underwater. When we encounter when we encountered them when we encountered them at the lighthouse, <laughs> they used their underwater weapons in the air. I'm not sure if they're less effective in the air or not, but... Tell me, do you hate them? A little bit. So we should get rid of this threat, then? Absolutely. As Annie's mentioned, dead civilian can pay no taxes. The Baron nods his head. Take what you need, Captain. We are at war. The Captain is, steps back a little bit from that. Um, yes, sir. If you'll excuse me, my husband is not feeling well. Good luck. We will give you what resources we have. Would that we had more time. The captain yeah. kind of nods his head. Thank you, my great honorable lord and lady, and I bow. Thank you, and I'll bow to both of them too. Medric. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking right now? I'm thinking that something is sketch with the Baroness, but I'm not going to say that out loud. <laughs> First, that we can't see her, and second, it seems almost like the Baron's being controlled by her. <laughs> and also, why would she just, like, ask me, do you hate them? And it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like something's wrong. Okay. Can I make, like, an insight check? Or... Uh, nope. Damn it. Yeah. The captain... Is he reading my thoughts? I don't know. Could be. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, the but overall, I am glad that we're getting reinforcements. The captain kind of nods his head. Well, um, I'm sorry to have disturbed you. I'll speak to the house captain, or the house guys, I should say. And uh, we'll leave you for now. And he kind of nods his head and uh, nods his head and holds it down there for a second and then the Baron says good luck keep us all safe thank you the captain turns and leads you out through the door do you go through? do you go with him? yep Yep. the uh, um, two attendants close to the door behind you Baroness though like really quick uh, what are you trying to do? Do we, uh, as we, as we go outside the door, do we walk by the Baroness's pillow chair? You walk a little bit closer. Yeah. I'll try to like catch a glimpse of what she looks like. Okay. Make a perception check. Okay. As you're moving by, there's a, a, a small amount of, of air movement in the room. Not much. The room is noticeably dead. But the fact that the four of you are kind of walking briskly 
gives just a moment for the the uh, the tr semi-translucent silk to float up a little bit. And in that moment, you kind of get a, a small glimpse of just the, the Baroness's hand, really. The skin is very, very pale. And her hand looks very thin. Um, looks... Um, you can see the, the the skin is pulled back a little bit, almost yeah. like it's uh, 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 an older woman's hand, really. Um, looking much more like a, a grandmother's hand, but her voice was very much of a of a younger woman's hand, a younger woman's voice. That seems a little incongruous to you. Yeah. Uh, the captain walks swiftly down the hallway. Well, um, that went well. Yes, they, they seem to understand the, the gravity of, of the situation, and I will go uh, speak to the guards here. There are about a dozen who work here at the um, at the house itself. It does seem a little bit un, unnerved by the experience, but trying to push through. Seems like it was too easy. Uh, well, they can uh, see reason, and uh, with my um, rank, they clearly knew that it was of importance, um, and uh, your statements helped to support that. So, um, fortunately, Reben's voice did not reach this far that quickly. Um, with a dozen or so added on to the forces, uh, we will have about two dozen in total uh, of trained um, trained fighters. Um, there will be two or three that'll still be here, and they'll make sure to lock up the building, uh, lock up the gates to make sure nothing can get through. Uh, is you don't believe the, the Baron themselves, the Baron and Baroness are actually a target of this, of this attack. At least that's what you seem to indicate. I'll look at Silas. Yeah, I don't think that uh, they are, but I mean, we don't. Know attacks so. yeah and, and from where you, where you were talking to oxia before it, she seemed very much focused on the town yeah um, which is quite a distance away i would be surprised if she even knew about the barons or the baron and the baroness well we can count that among strange blessings i suppose uh yes well um i'm going to be here to brief the guards and set out with them you can head back now if you'd like Return the horses to the guard station. I'm, I'm sure that they'll be taken yeah. care of. You take care of yourself, and we will see you when you get back to the town. Indeed. Um, well. By now, Nathan would have spoken to some of the town leaders. I hope the word has spread to be cautious about the uh, expected bandit attack. Mm-hmm. But still, I will need more voices carrying that message, if you can. Definitely. Certainly. Now, if you excuse me, I have some explaining to do. All right. Good luck, and we'll see you soon. And he nods and takes off through a different door, kind of opposite to where the central chamber was. Um, just a question from my experience, this interaction for me, the player feels a bit un, un normal un, unusual, just in general, like the setting, the setup of it. Would that be the case? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't have visited any barons at this point, but some of them would have made their, their trip to the palace. And the reason they're chosen, or the reason that they've risen in, in, in power, oftentimes they were promoted to the rank of baron. And they're promoted because uh, they're charismatic, they've got a lot of leadership ability, they would be very in, uh, inquisitive. This felt really weird. Now, the captain, while a little bit unnerved, didn't seem to see this as an unusual interaction. Interesting. She's been worm tonguing him for a while. Different universe altogether. 
Mm-hmm. I'll look, is there anybody still around us now that the uh, captain has left? Nope, it looks like you've been left alone. In fact, aside from the two servants and the person at the gate and the person at the stables, you haven't seen anybody else. Hmm. You'd think they would have Again, one. that kind of feels off. Usually there's more going on. Yeah, there's usually more people. I would think. Felt off. Uh, should we wait until we're outside the? Uh, I, I I wouldn't be saying any of this out loud until we were out. Okay. Okay. Uh, the girl who was taking care of your horses is, uh, you can almost say, not happy to see you, but that's because you feel like she's been having a conversation with the horses ever since you left. Nice. Um, Hello. Um, oh, hey. Um, are you leaving? Yep. Oh, sorry, my manners. Uh, your horses are ready, sirs and madam. Well, thanks for taking care of them. Oh, it's my pleasure. You did a wonderful job. They're cuties. And you, your horse, uh, Silas, um, there's almost, actually, sorry, it's not your horse. It's the one that Medric had. Uh, you get the impression, this weird sort of sense, that the horse kind of straightens up its shoulders a little bit. As if I am not a cutie. <laughs> um, but she so gives... I'll ask you a hand. So how do you like working for the Baron and Baroness? Um, make an insight check. I would also like to make this, if possible. Yeah, I could, I, I could see you're all there, so... Oh, Annie, good luck. I want to see Twelve. three more 11s. Oh, not quite. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not paying attention to her. I'm paying attention to my horse. Um, the first impression, uh, Medric, is uh, the question kind of took her by surprise. Um, and then she kind of almost instantly puts on that I am a servant and you are the Lord kind of, kind of distance between the two of you. Oh, uh, it's quite nice to work with the animals, sir. I love them very much. And she gives your horse a, a, a squeeze around the neck. And the horse kind of whinnies, but then... We don't work see it kind for of the Baron, in. dear. Oh, but that, that... You don't need to be afraid to speak your mind. They are nice horses. They're very nice horses. And we all... You just we, seem on edge. We all work for the Baron here. Baron and the Baroness. They're very nice people. You can make a, a uh, uh, an insight check against that statement, Annie. And Annie only, or she specifically kind of drew this this line out. So I want to give this to her. Potentially, that's an eighteen. Eighteen. Woo! Um, there is definitely a nervousness behind that statement, uh, as in, I love my job. I love working with the horses. I work for the Baron and Baroness. But I love my job, and I love working for the with the horses. Uh, there's a nervousness there. Thank you for your work. It's no pleasure, or no trouble. Come back anytime. I mean, the Baron and Baroness willing, of course. Definitely. You gather your horses. The girl goes and and kind of. Uh, you feel like she's waving goodbye more to the horses than the three of you, uh, but then goes back to mucking out the stables. Uh, Bob sees you come and opens up the gates for you to leave once more. The rain has not abated. It's still pretty heavy, heavy hanging over everything like a cloak. Once back out on the road, you start to talk. That yeah. was the most awkward situation I've ever been in, and I've been in some awkward ones. There's definitely something weird. Definitely. It's like, why does she just ask me if I hate the sea devil? Like, of course I hate the sea devils, but is it bad? Is it bad to hate things in these parts? Like, uh, I think, I think feeling hatred for anything is unfortunate. But 
I've, I've met mar many ask. barons and baronesses, and this was odd, to say the least. We couldn't see her, and why aren't we allowed to talk to the Baron directly? That'll be a question for Captain Verndell when, when he gets back. I did catch a glimpse of her hand, though, as we walked by. The veil lifted very slightly, and it's like the Baroness has like a young girl's voice, but a grandmother's hand. Super pale. Hmm. That's weird. Mm hmm. Yes. I mean, pretending is my trade. Um, it, I agree. Something definitely seems off with her. Possibly. She's controlling him. Maybe she's a vampire. Maybe. I, I don't know much about vampires. Um, there are a few very entertaining songs. <laughs> mm. They tend to turn very body very quickly, though. As most songs do. That's I fair. mean, I might have read a book or two, but... I've also read books of, like, Krakens and stuff, so, like, who knows? Anyway, at least sure they're cool. real. But we probably have something, I think we have something more important than immediate right now. Yeah, I agree. And she I seems to be looking for it later. Hmm... So, you ride back down the hill in contemplative silence, I suppose, uh, being beaten yeah. by, the, by the weather. The lightning cracks are even more frequent. And now, actually, coming down the side of, or the, the end of the uh, Raven's Bluff, you get a, a, a deeper look out to see. Uh, and you can see that while the fog has never lifted, which is a little bit unusual, fog usually lifts at some point during the day, this time it seems to be thick and st still. Um, further uh, out to sea, there seems to be what looks like a roiling storm, uh, twisting and turning and heading straight for the village. It's going to be a very, very wet night. Well, this fits with what my incantation predicted. Perhaps they're intending on attacking under cover of the storm. Most likely. That would make sense. From where you can see also, you see what's probably the errant widow. The one ship that was in dock has pulled out and is now trying to make its way out of the bay. It's fighting hard, however. Um, it looks like the waves are starting to get churned up and the wind is definitely not working in its favor. Uh, it's having to make some pretty extreme angles to get any motion. Hmm. Oh, I hope they're going to be okay. I hope I so, I hope to, uh, sort it out. Uh, that guy, Raymond. Uh, I'm going to go. Had had we set up a place that we were going to go? start doing stuff or I don't think we had anything specific okay um, the captain said it later the, 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 the men were being assembled at the seawall but aside from that I don't think he made any particular location yeah for I think that's a good place to to head then yeah uh, Medric is the flame keeper able to send any assi or assist any I can go see her. I know I did mention the attack to her yesterday. I mean, I imagine she's strong enough to at least help. But uh, to be honest, I don't know where else we can really draw help from. Hmm. <sighs> 
I can go see her and get the serve as, a, as an excuse to try to get people to barricade their windows and doors. Yeah, that would be a good idea. With how bad it is already. Perhaps even mentioning uh, or reminding people of the bandits so they don't just lock the shutters, but actually lock themselves in. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I think I know what uh, uh, Silas will probably just uh, at least until it's getting close to time uh, he'll go through the town putting on a like putting on a, a performance uh, of songs suggest uh, uh, basically telling everyone that there's a strong storm coming in tonight, batten down the hatches as hard as you've ever had them. Uh, and don't forget those who prowl in the night. Uh, best idea to just close all the doors, weld them shut, uh, live in the basement for the next day. Well, <laughs> your door shut. I'm staying home. <laughs> Basically, just uh, everybody be safe, uh, and um, we're talking about the shadowy infection that'll like people can breathe in, and then it stays dormant in them for five days, and they can infect other people. And then to prevent that from spreading, they have to stay inside their homes. <laughs> yeah, You're talking about the plague, boy. I know the plague. Don't forget to buy all the toilet paper you can. The only way to be safe from the plague is to stab your neighbors. <laughs> no. Uh, um, okay. So that's. I what... would like to go back to the inn right quick and let let her know that we have the backing of of the the Baron and the guards. Definitely, just everybody in the cellar. <laughs> Sandy's a lot Everybody more alarmed can... by the by this. You, you get the impression that she believed you before and was planning to do this, but now it sort of makes it really real, if you will. Um, and she does kind of complain that her sister has got uh, uh, so much baking already underway that they're not going to be able to go in right away. Uh, they're going to have to finish all of that first. Uh, however, they will eat yep. well. <laughs> um, and she's also... We'll come asked, get you when, when it's done. She's also hinted at some of her regulars that they're going to be staying. <laughs> um, and the, those two that were arguing about the, the match before at the table are still arguing. The, the pieces are in a different place now, so you presume they've had at least one or two more games since then. Fair enough. What is Medrick going to do? Silas is going to be going through the town, kind of rallying people with song and with story. And he has a specific kind of place that she wanted to check. What about Medrick? I'm going to go to the Temple of Ignis to talk to a uh, flamekeeper Tidewell. Okay. Oh, before... Um, sorry, uh, before he left the group, he would have uh, reminded Medric that she may want to be extra careful today. Yeah. Because of like the Marsh clan possibly going after her. <laughs> you might not want to state them in particular, but just tell her to watch out from the shadows. Yeah. Yes, I'll just go to the Temple of Ignis. Okay. How many other doors do they have there? Like, is it just Nora Tidewell, or are there any others? She's the only one at the moment. Okay. Yeah, uh, there have been... She's mentioned, I think, before that uh, there have been some traveling Ignians who've come through the town and made, their, made a pilgrimage to the temple, but no one else has stayed. Okay. Uh, and you find uh, a Tidewell uh, kind of going through this, this old chest. She's dragged out uh, and... You see, she's pulling out some old armor. Uh, nice. It looks pretty fancy and also pretty beaten up. Uh, you're not sure how long it's been inside that trunk, but T Tidewell is getting up there in age. Uh, and normally she's wearing simple uh, yellow robes or or, uh, or with white sashes and has the, the symbol of Ignis around her. She's not constantly on fire like a Kmar might be, uh, but uh, the symbol's never far from her. 
And under the light of Ignis's Everflame, she's kind of hauling out this stuff and kind of setting it out and trying to remember where all the pieces go. Ah, Medric, good to see you. You as well, Flamekeeper at Idwell. I'm going to need a hand with this. If I'm going to be fighting, I'm going to need to figure out which way is front. Certainly. I'll help I'll help, I'll help her out with her armor. Okay. As that discussion goes on, can you keep the temple safe? Well, I'm, I'm certainly planning to. Is there stupid cars and trucks and stuff? <laughs> Burn them and those things up. Um, well, I mean, I was planning to make sure that the temple does not go undefended, of course, but uh, you sound like you've got something in particular in mind. Silas was asking if there was a chance you could aid us or aid the town in the battle. I do realize that the safety of the temple is important. But if you do step out, just be careful. Well, of course. I can help in many ways. My fighting days might be a bit behind me. I can probably still brain somebody with a, a good cudgel. As soon as I could find my cudgel. But uh, I've prayed on what you had mentioned yesterday, and I am, I am prepared to give assistance where I can. Good. Just I'm wondering how much I should say here. <laughs> <laughs> a little tighter. That's a little, up to you. A little what? tighter. Pull on the strap a little bit more. Okay, too much. Too much. As she tries to put the uh, the breastplate on, and it's like it doesn't quite fit. And you get the impression that she doesn't really want to acknowledge the fact that it probably doesn't fit her that well anymore. Um, but, uh, you can see that it, it's, it's intricately carved, or intricately rather, um, uh, no, I guess carved metal, I guess it would be. Um, and it does show signs of having been, uh, worn hard and put away rough, you might say. It probably should have been repaired a long time ago. In fact, she says as much. It's like, I thought I'd given this up, but I guess I needed it. Oh, that's good for the spine, right? Anyway, um, I've heard from Silas that some people may try to make an opportunistic attack on the Temple of Ignis. This obviously can't be allowed to happen. No. Well, that... Who? The Sea Devils? Sea Devils, bandits. Well, most of them wouldn't come this far into town just to rustle up some ancient cleric. But I suppose I can keep a watch out. Oh, that reminds me. I did find something for you. Uh, oh. A friend of mine left this here a long time ago. I I miss her, but that's not the point. And she kind of rummages in the back of this, this uh, crate and pulls out a shield. It's actually a small-looking shield. Um, it's, it's probably about half the size of your normal shield. It's got a different symbol of Ignis on it, as every Ignean is encouraged to make their own. Mm -hmm. um, I would like you to borrow this for the time being. This will probably help you quite a bit. I can't wield this. It's meant for a Kmar. No, oh, pick it up. You know, now, what it feels like. It, it feels about the same weight as a normal shield. And she steps back a step. Um, actually, no, she doesn't have to step back a step. She's she's uh, she's she's far enough along the pathway. Um, all you have to do is concentrate on it. Can you do that? Mm hmm And you focus on the shield. And the shield ignites. Nice. Large flames form around it, and the rest of the shield uh, with the flames there is now the normal size shield. So normally it's about the size of a buckler. would only give you an mm -hmm. AC1 bonus. With the fire shield extended, gives you the full AC2 bonus. Um, you nice. can feel the flames licking up your arm. Uh, you do take uh, two points of fire damage. That is halved. Okay. Um, but it quickly kind of settles down a little bit. Now, that is a proper Kmar shield. Um, it, it should serve you well. Just be careful with it. Your Kmar training is not completed yet, and... Oh, you might want to put that out. And she points at your arm, which is on fire. 
uh, and the there shield is. itself vanishes down to the, the, the simple metal it was before. Okay. Um, How long does it last? Well, it only lasts for about a minute at a time. But about three times a day, you should be able to summon the fire of Ignis. Be careful, though. While it will burn you a little bit, it will burn them a lot more. And you should be able to strike with it. Good. I'll give you the full details uh, later. I meant to do up the card. I didn't. Uh, It it came our shield on command. It lights on fire. Uh, Nice. Anytime you you successfully block... Which basically means anytime you, you the attack hits but does not uh, bypass your armor, uh, it's a D4 fire damage to the attacker, and you can attack with the shield as a bonus action, uh, and it does a D4 fire damage, and that's strength based, so it's D4 plus your strength bonus. Oh yeah. However, you do take uh, uh, two points of fire damage. Normally four, but because you're a Kmar, it's halved. Uh, two point, two parts, points, two points of fire damage for each mo- each round it's on. Oh, okay. Um, right. So it, it does hurt you. Um, as she said, you're not fully along in your your uh, Kmar training yet, so you haven't quite reached the level where the fire doesn't hurt you. Get it. Now, that should do some proper damage. And she kind of looks chagrin at her own statement. I mean, to those that deserve it, of course. The sea devils. Yes. And any bandits who come crawling in here, too. Mm-hmm. Ah, ha, ha. And she pulls out the cudgel she was looking for. There we go. Now, it's a keeper tied well. Just... Is it wrong to hate the sea devils? Huh. Well, we had a, uh, a weird encounter with the Baron and the Baroness earlier today. Well, did you? Hmm. Yes. The good thing is, Captain Verendel believed us, took us to the Baron for additional proof of the attack, and we spoke with them. And we were not allowed to speak to the Baron. The Baron could only speak to us. We were only to address the Baroness, which we couldn't see. She was hidden behind veils. And she asked me if I hated the sea devils. What did you answer? I said, well, a little bit. Was it the truth? Yes. Well, the the truth was a straight up yes, but... Hmm. It was not a lie. I haven't seen them in a long time. They used to come through the town quite often, actually. Not for a few years now, I suppose. Lovely couple. How old is Ah, well, it's not polite to ask one's age, uh, particularly those of uh, royal station, I suppose, but I don't know. She's a bit older than I am, I think. And the flame keeper is, is probably in her 50s. Okay. Because I'll, I'll describe again, like what I saw, like what I that I managed to like glimpse, catch a glimpse of her hand and her age, like that I could deduce from her hand, did not match her voice. <laughs> she always had a beautiful voice. Perhaps she's just getting vain. It happens to the best of us, I think. And she's nice, probably closer to the best of us than I am. Still. I haven't seen them in a while. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully I was wrong about my assessment of the Baroness and everything is good to go. Well, one problem at a time. Yeah. We have more immediate problems right now. Indeed. I'm going to have to have this strap replaced. This is definitely not going to fit very long. And she's kind of complaining about this this part that... <laughs> Not quite going around her waist like it probably once did. And she gives the cudgel a few uh, swings, kind of feeling its weight. You get the feeling that, that she used to be a lot better at this, as in she seems very natural when she picks it up, but there's an unsteadiness in her arm as though she's not fought anything for quite some time. 
Perhaps I can bring other things to bear. <laughs> yes. Well, stay safe. You too, Medrick. And uh, you'll be Burns back for... <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> you'll be back for more lessons soon, I think. Oh, yes. Uh, and thanks for the shield. It's only a loan. I'm still holding on to it for a friend. Oh, nod. Understood. Um, with Silas going through the town, there aren't a lot of people out because of the heavy rain that starts, um, but you kind of make a tour of some of the places you know people gather. There's a few shops here and there, um, kind of making your, your magical mystery tour. Um, and people are starting to, to hear the song and, and you, you get the impression that people have, have heard the song before. Make a performance check, though, to remind them of the importance and maybe how right now is a good time to batten down the hatches and be safe from, and, and what was it, weld your door shut against bandits? <laughs> you would be su suggesting that uh, just that they make sure they can keep anything out. Okay. Um, the shopkeepers seem a little bit less excited about the notion of sending everybody home, but you feel like the guards have also been going through and around, and there's a certain resonance that you seem to hit um, with a number of the people um, who seem to be convinced that, you know what, bad storms happen here. This one looks like it's going to be a terrible one. In fact, you can point to the somewhat twisting winds that are just outside the bay as it's coming towards her towards the, uh, the area. Definitely some convincing going on. Um, we're just about out of time. Is there any last thing that Annie wants to do? Um, I would basically kind of do what Silas is doing and just go around and make sure that everyone that I see, like any kids are like ushered home type thing. Uh, and then I'd try to regroup with everyone. Okay. Um, as you're going around and, and, uh, and looking for people to usher, and, and there is some urgency, probably because the, the pounding rain is still keeping it pretty uncomfortable to be outside for too long, uh, you turn into a, a small alley uh, as you see some, some kids gathering. Um, and there's about a half a dozen of them there. They've managed to all kind of hunker down under the edge of an overhang uh, a, a roof that was extended just a little bit further. And you can actually see that it's been extended even further. It looks like someone crudely nailed a piece of wood up on the very top to extend the, the coverage. Uh, and they're kind of talking quietly to each other. Uh, they see you uh, coming down the, the alleyway uh, as you've been talking to different people. Make an insight check. Sixteen. 16. Nice. Um, the talk amongst them My goes... Day is very today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least it's not another one in jail, so... Yeah. Uh, they seem to be chatting amongst each other, sharing jokes, laughing a little bit. Um, but as you kind of turn towards them, um, you get the, the feeling kind of shift as they're watching you warily, um, maybe sizing you up. And then you kind of realize that they are a sort of family, but they are probably not your average citizen in this town. They look kind of grubby and dirty. Their clothes are torn. Uh, they're, uh, one of them is wearing a hat pulled down low over his eyes, and you can see that the hat has been uh, repaired at least twice with fabric that doesn't fit the hat. Um, and they look like they're tensing a little bit as you come closer. I'll just yell, you might want to get away from the, the waterfront. It's going to be a bad storm. Where do you suggest we go, then? Further one, inland. One of the taller kids. Maybe you could spare a few coins to get us there. And a couple of them are starting to approach down the alleyway. I, I toss a gold. It kind of lands hard in the you know in a puddle in front of them, and the two that were approaching look down at it incredulous, as if that's never really worked before, and then the two of them 
butt heads as they both dive for the coin. They shove each other Get a little to bit. Save. And I use that to scamper off. <laughs> you can hear the sound of a very short fist fight behind you. As one of them just yells out, Ow, that hurt. It's my coin though, isn't it? And you head back in, back into the street. Rain's pounding heavily. You look down the main street of Eilthwater. It leads right out to the ocean. You can see the docks which extend out into the ocean as well. No, no big ships tied up at the moment that you can see beyond the, the, uh, the warehouses which line along the docks. A lot of people milling about. You can still see lights inside the big uh, uh, bar down there. Uh, the Cooper's Mess has been referred to a couple of times. Uh, people still seem to be gathered there a little bit, uh, maybe weathering out the storm together. The sound of different people uh, rushing about their business as the uh, clouds are getting dimmer and the sun seems to pale visibly as the cloud gets thick. Yep. I forgot. I'm going to put my papers back in my room. Okay. When you went to speak to uh, Sandy yeah. earlier, there was an opportunity to do that. Yep. Yeah. That storm that was out at the edge of the bay seems to have moved right directly into the bay itself. Winds are now whipping up around. The rain is actually weirdly lighter as a lot of the water is getting twirled and twisted around, slamming against the walls and upper, upper levels of these buildings. In the center of the storm, there's a lightning flash, and then another, and then another. And that's when you realize lightning doesn't strike from the same place over and over again, but that did. And at the center of that lightning is a bright light which starts to grow. The sun isn't down, but it's hidden by the clouds entirely. The town is in darkness, except for the flashing of the light in the center of the storm. A dark mass on the edge of the water, just below it, starts to resolve itself. That's a creature, round, and about the size of a ship coming oh towards boy. the town. And that's where we'll end for today. So we have yeah. fun in Elthwater. Uh, next week I get to destroy it, which is great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, spoiler, end of the campaign next week as I destroy the town. But, uh, <laughs> oh no, the clan will live on. We'll just have two new members. <laughs> <laughs> it's true the clan is fine they're fine uh we are uh, going to continue with this time for the next week um we've switched times as you may know if you're watching this live on twitch i don't think there's anybody at the moment but you could be two o'clock atlantic time is when our normal times are yeah uh, we we and that's a good point that i made, made a mistake just now uh, we're going to shift slightly to 2.30 uh, just to accommodate making a little bit of other other uh, uh, meetings easier to make it to or other things that are happening. Uh, it'll go up on uh, on uh, YouTube the next day, uh, youtube.com slash ENCIF1. I generally am able to make it up the next day, which is handy. Uh, now, in two weeks, there will not be an episode, so we will have one coming up on the uh, 20, 20th of uh, September and on the 27th, I will be exhausted from having run a game at Enbicon. If you're interested in Enbicon, look it up on tabletop.events. <laughs> uh, and uh, an entirely different game is going to be run by me because I have to invent a brand new game to run at a convention because I am dumb. Um, but uh, uh, after that, we should resume in October. So we'll have another episode next week, resuming uh, in October, and then maybe missing a week or two depending on how things go, but otherwise we'll try to keep keep it going. If you want to find us, go to Facebook, facebook.com slash L-O-T-D-I, uh, Legends of the Drowned Isles. It's a place where you can chat. Uh, we, we occasionally post a few things there. We're pretty bad at it, but we're trying to get better. Uh, also pretty bad at doing my World Anvil site, but I'm trying to get better at that as well. Uh, and we're adding a few more articles. I did a thing yesterday. I put Annie's character information 
on there, and also journal entries. So, there you go. Yeah. You, can get, you can get the real truth of what's happening in the campaign, as opposed to what I tell you. Uh, and uh, I just added Stuff another couple of articles. <laughs> it's coming from a certain perspective, yes. Or an uncertain perspective, as in my case. Uh, rife with spelling errors, uh, so that Pat tells me. So we'll fix that. Uh, and other than that, uh, I think that's it. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel or Twitch uh, and get regular updates. Uh, I think the Twitch one still has regular updates. YouTube does not, but it'll just be there in front of your face. So it's easy to find. <laughs> Uh, that's it. Anything else, folks? No. Nope. 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 Hearing none, I now declare the meeting open and closed. Wait. Try it's not to drown. It's been a long day. <laughs> Try not to drown. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we don't have a sign-up, do we? Just... Try not to drown. <laughs> Try not to drown. There you go. That's that's Legend of the Drowned Isles. Try not to drown. Talk to you again <laughs> later. See ya. Okay. <laughs>